He's click record. Ooh, we did it. All right. Mm -hmm. We're on. We're on. We're on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Motus Podcast. Hey. <laughs> I just thought <laughs> I'd I'm just waiting. I'm just I'd leave some room for you there. We are uh, sweating in a, a... We're not in the studio. Where are we? We're in a... We're oh. in Tracy's cabin. Tracy's cabin at, at Camp Woodward. Wood. Yeah, Camp Woodward. Which in is the sweltering hot heat. If you have no idea where Tracy's cabin is, it's where the mega ramp used to be. But I didn't know... I've been here three years in a row. I didn't know where the mega ramp Dude, used to be. most people have no clue it's we hidden. even have a mega ramp. Yeah. It looks yeah. pretty scary. It's like, like out of a movie. We are, it's like it, post-apocalyptic. Oh, sort yeah. Of ramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you stepped like 10 foot to our left, you would fall off the top of a mega ramp yeah. and down a big hill it's weird that it's attached to this cabin as well yeah Mad. um but yeah that that mysterious voice you can hear is marlon johnson yes sir yeah you got it. No, that's <laughs> that me man sudden brain freak that of like is, oh no what's I that? that that's how i felt at dinner when i had to introduce you oh like, yeah oh, that was awful you did well with that to be Thank fair you, i was like oh crap so i'm not ready for this just for some some clarification marlon is you are parkour director correct parkour yeah. director here at camp i've been here for this is my fourth year now this summer is the first summer I'm doing all 12 weeks. Well, really 13. Been here since week zero. And it's an experience, man. Like, um, a lot of lessons learned, a lot of mistakes made, a lot of things I'm never doing again. And, yeah, no, great experience overall. Grateful for the position. Grateful to be able to be at Woodward, grow the parkour program, parkour community. Most of you guys know this place is, like, the American all up. It's yep. like Mecca for us. This is where we come to. All to times disperse. 20. Yeah. yeah. Like this place is, this is insane. So, so for me to be in the position I'm in is just amazing. And I'm grateful for it, even on the days I hate my job. <laughs> <laughs> How did you actually become a director? What, what did you do in the previous years, like here? Oh, man, that's a great question. So I actually got this position. My whole time at Woodward has been pretty interesting. The first year I came, which was four years back, I came as a visiting coach because my gymnastics team, my gymnastics job, we had a parkour program. Mm -hmm. We came up here with about 113 kids. Wow. Um, you know, not all parkour. A lot of them were gymnasts, yeah. about 20 or 30 of which were parkour athletes. However, when you come to Woodward with a team that big, you start to get the VIP treatment. So mm. we had a golf cart. We stayed at the lodge. I got to just do what you guys are doing, play around all week. I was having an amazing time, yeah. so much so that I got to interact with everyone because I didn't have any responsibility here. That's cool. That let me make connections with all the right people. I made friends with everybody. And the next year, I applied for a job and came back, and I worked as a coach for a week. I came as a visiting coach again the next year and worked as a coach for one week. So I stayed for two weeks. And then my third year, I came and I did an entire month. That was last year. Same. That was when I first met you guys. Yeah, that was weeks nine cool. through 12. And while I was here for that month, I really got to see a lot about what was going on here. I saw that there was a lot of great things, but I also noticed there was a lot of opportunity not being touched on a lot yeah. of things that it was just... Great things were happening, but they were happening unintentionally. And I wanted to really drive in with some attention. And I say that because my first year, like I said, I was here as a visiting coach, talking to everybody, talking to a lot of the kids. I found that when I would start talking to them, it would be a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And before I knew it, a little circle would start to form around me. And now there's you know, 10, 15, 20 kids sitting in just listening to what I'm saying. And mm. we're having a dialogue. And I'm not thinking anything of, of it all the time. Later, the next year when I came back and I'm seeing kids and they're like, hey, dude, like, yo, thank you for that advice. I've been using it all year and yeah, yeah. it's been like really working out. And oh, my God, like that thing you told me to do, I've been doing it. And I'm just in my mind, like, what did I tell you? Like, <laughs> like, I don't remember, man. Yeah. Like, I can barely remember like what happened this morning. Yeah. So I like I'm asking them, like, yeah, what, what did I tell you to do again? And it's thankfully all good stuff. And I was like, oh, thank God, man. Like, okay, yeah, that sounds like me. They're telling me the advice I said. And I was like, wow, like you took that and you ran with it for an entire year. Mm. I was not expecting you to like take that information and hold on to it and actually work with it for so much and so long that 
I realize, wow, we are in an interesting place. This is the only place where these kids are coming. You have them for five days straight, day and night. They're training with them. You're eating with them. You're kicking it with them when you guys are doing nothing. Their ears are perked up for the entire week. They want to listen. They want to learn. And we have an opportunity to really teach them how to be people in those moments. Mm. And we've been doing it unintentionally. So I figured, like, I want to get really intentional about this. I really want to capitalize on this opportunity and really take notice of where we are because their school teachers don't get this sort of attention from them. Mom and dad don't really get this sort of attention from them. Yeah. Even some of their religious leaders, like, you know, like no one's getting this sort of attention from them and then having them this unfiltered for that long of a period of time. So, yeah. like, summer camp is, oh, my God, Woodward is just like a place where we could do that with them. So I reached out in the off season this past winter, and I let them know, like, hey, any way, shape, or form, I can help. I want to help. Um, the gym director, Brittany, she reached out to me before I kind of sent that email asking for help. I sent her a long list of she wanted to know about parkour events going on that Woodward should have a presence at. Yep. And I sent her, like, the most detailed packet of <laughs> gyms, events, everything going on, brands she needs to reach out to, just everything I could possibly unload trying to give value to Woodward and to the parkour community. Yeah. And with that... I was just like showing them I'm really I do care about this like I genuinely am invested in parkour among other things and I want to see it grow and I consider Woodward to be a huge place that can affect many communities at large because the kids come here Uh, we're like a central hub at like a train station we're Penn Station or JFK where you come here and then you transfer and go out into the world so if we could instill ideas here those ideas travel back into other communities yeah and we affect change that much quickly more quick quicker 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 more, yeah. yeah faster yeah. we yeah. do it fast yeah. efficiency <laughs> here point a to point b so um yeah i got the position just by reaching out letting them know how interested i was working for camp in the off season since january uh working as a lead and working as one of their um we're working with the marketing team and promoting for camp. That's how I started. So is this your, is this essentially your full-time job now as of January? I would not fully say so, but yes, in a sense. Yeah. It is like I worked part-time for camp and then I was still working, funny enough, like part-time in an animal hospital back home. Oh, really? And I also started up my own thing where I was renting space from a CrossFit gym and doing strength and conditioning programs Sick. for like young parkour athletes because I was tired of seeing the 15-year-olds with arthritis who have the skills and the tricks, but they just don't condition the body because yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. see it as a need. They're like, oh, I can do it. Like, But that's a whole other conversation, man. Yeah. I can talk about that. There is forever. so many people who have good knowledge about the human body here. Like, so, oh, know, yeah. He- yeah. Henry's really good. Oh, uh, Henry's amazing. brother as well, Mason. Yep. I'd be, I had like a big talk with him about my ankles and I've been basically just doing everything he's been telling me to and it's like working pretty well but everyone seems to like treat themselves properly which is good um but, but yeah. i think like we were saying earlier and i think we said before on the podcast like when you are training and you're in like a movement environment other people are movement minded and like it's i mean nate's the pro like i, oh, I always yeah, bring exactly. up nate you're yeah, a sick yeah. gym you'll you'll look over and nate will be stretching right like, there'll it be makes... so, there's always someone looking after themselves yeah, and you're like exactly. oh i should do that yeah yeah and so. there's that many people doing it it just kind of yeah, yeah. It's, like it's interesting I, inspo. i'm sure you guys will um have talked about this in past on past episodes so i believe i heard it here as well uh-huh. where a lot of the athletes you know with their instagram clips you're only seeing the highlights you're not yeah. seeing what's yeah. going on in the other 23 hours of the day. Yeah. And that's where, you know, the kids, their brains, or even adults, your brains are filling in the rest of the picture with what you believe is happening. And mm-hmm. if every video is bigger, bigger, and bigger, I'm assuming, dang, this dude's just sending, 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 when yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. even when he's not recording. And, you know, I'm here at camp. I'm in a blessed position where I get to hang out with the pros, meet you guys. We had Nate here earlier this summer. We talked about you know what the rest of the routine looks like what does it look like when the cameras aren't rolling Mm. and that's where we find out oh he's he's stretching he's taking care of his body he's thinking about eating healthy he's reaching out to physios and to personal trainers and getting programs created and he's contemplating how do i make it to the age of 40 as a mover and a yeah. practitioner yeah yeah, yeah. Just, saying similar things last time rather than burning right? out yeah. yeah right so cool yeah you know, like so longevity is it's big for me um 
here, one of my main goals at camp as a director, one of the, basically the mission for me is, among a few things, like the main, main mission is teach the kids how to be people and develop their mindsets. Because in the past, all we've ever focused on is developing the movement. And that's great. Now we're at the point where that system runs automatically. Just coming to camp, I could pull all my coaching staff away from camp and just let the kids come here with the pros. And the movement is going to level up anyway because it's more so the environment it's i mean it's facilities isn't it like there's some kids will come here and they've never been on a trampoline or had a phone pit and they're like oh and now i can try this thing yeah that's a given but it's like what else can they get from it and it's also just the energy of like yo i'm training with people that want to train that want to progress that are thinking about it as much as i'm thinking about it and i don't feel like an oddball here and they're giving me little tips and tricks here and like you guys were just came we just came from the staff demo how yeah, high yeah. was the energy in there? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, so cool. I was sitting still. I was on my computer trying to get some emails sent and work done, and I started to get the feel that I want to go and train right now. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, wow, the energy in here is beyond stoke right now. It is mad. So just, I mean, well, there's two things I want to say because I probably should have mentioned at the start. Marlon is basically going to use uh, this podcast for Woodward. Are, are going to start a podcast, right? Yes, sir. So this this will also mm-hmm. appear on there. Um, so regarding what you're about to hear there's probably going to be some back and forth because he also wants to ask myself and keenan some stuff um but just to so just one sort of question i have as regarding parkour at woodward is and the staff demo is a good segue is that it we were at the staff demo which was for cheerleaders and gymnastics and that's it, right? Like tumbling and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But also at Woodward, what is famously known for is skateboarding, BMX, scooter and things. I personally feel like the way parkour is moving is definitely more in the in the, the vein of skateboarding and BMX and sort of that vein of action sports. But at Woodward, it's like under the, the cheer umbrella. Yeah. Is Ooh. that... That's obviously been something since the start <laughs> because of the people who brought it in. I mean, Tara, who now doesn't work here anymore, she was kind of a big player in, in the early days. Uh, stuff like that like it is is do you think parkour will always remain under this umbrella because i don't know it feels slightly out of place in some ways like and also the just the way i don't know it it just doesn't feel like it necessarily fits perfectly um i don't know if it would fit perfectly with the skateboarding the bmx but i think our cultures as a sport is much more in line with them Mm. um i can just picture more uh with obviously the demo was crazy like you're saying the energy was mad you see morgan just throwing like triples and quads and everything so it's really yeah, yeah, yeah. really mad to watch but then it's it's hard to kind of separate that uh to have like a parkour demo because really in a gym like that it's just it just is t- just going to be flips it's just tumbling yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah which is still cool but if the demo was with more of like the skating and the bmx and the scootering they all do it on walls and ledges and things so it's quite easy for people to actually see what parkour is do you know what i mean like 100 percent. yeah and yeah, no, dude, like that's a great question because that has been another part. Like as I have the main mission here, I'm picking up little side missions at camp. You know, like it just <laughs> side quest. Yeah, it really, it really <laughs> feels like that, man. It really does. Um, so one of which is getting parkour at Woodward to be removed from the gym sports program mm-hmm. and placed into action sports program. Yep. And I've made a lot of great progress with that this summer. So now I would say we're almost like halfway in the gym program halfway in the action sports program yep. and we see that now by our kids on sundays when they check in they used to be a part of the gym sports chair orientation they sat in the room and now with they're in the park a thousand uh, screaming cheerleaders yeah and like when they would say like cheerleaders you hear the girls screaming ah gymnast girls screaming parkour the boys and it's we like, don't really like scream at that high of a pitch like yeah. so they were just like what do what do we do we're they felt very out of place yeah. and we kind of felt weird being there. It was like, that's not really how the sport goes. Exactly. Yeah. We don't yeah. scream for no I'm reason. I'm so happy that you're the person oh, yeah, in charge yeah, yeah, of this yeah. because you really get it. Like, I you understand. appreciate it. And that. I feel yeah. like, I mean, I came first time here four years ago now and back then it felt like we kind of wandered around camp and parkour was a much smaller thing and the park existed, but it was, it was fairly new and it felt very much like the kind of skaters and the BMX is like they're just the vibe it just they were like who the hell are these guys kind of thing and now you walk around they're like oh you parkour oh sick like Johnson was doing lines in the skate park yesterday and they oh, were like yeah. loving it like there were skaters willingly like because we were we typically won't go and film in the skate parks when they're busy because it's not our space but uh 
but we sorry I'll just drop my neutral rainbow um, <laughs> we we were in there when it was empty training and then a few skaters started coming out and like but Johnson had a line that we were trying to finish and they uh, we've even a couple of years ago I remember sort of having a similar scenario and just feeling very unwelcome whereas this time they were really like chill with just waiting and watching yeah. and like supporting they were even yeah it was like Johnson yeah. didn't get the last flip and they're like come on next try next yeah, try yeah yeah and it's like oh sick like this feels yeah. like you kind of belong um, they were even like is he pro is he pro <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sick that they get hyped that it's like well we're not the same sport yeah like, like they don't know how it, they don't know if he's famous but the fact that he could be a pro they're like oh shit like, yeah, right. exactly. you know yeah. and that's cool man I'm happy to hear that because that was literally like I, I can show you guys in my notebook like things I've written down before mm. camp started and I wanted that sort of energy to come about where the parkour guys go into the skate space yeah. and the skaters are stoked to yeah. see them and mm. it's just like, whoa, that's parkour. Like, yeah, show them how cool it is. Yeah. And I figured, okay, what's the best way to make it so that we're accepted when we show up? People aren't just thinking like, oh, there's the lame dudes that jump on things again. Mm. I decided like, okay, let's go get friendly with the action sport directors. Like, yeah. let me go meet those guys, figure mm. out what they're about, figure out what their mindset's about, what they got going on. The action sport directors here at camp are some of the coolest dudes I have ever met in my entire life Sick. amazing athletes and just amazing people like they speak what they mean and mean what they speak yeah mm. really it, they're genuine like that's the best word to describe them they are genuine the vibes off of them are so true if they tell you something you know you can trust their word it's just what it is and I used to skateboard for anyone that doesn't know I skated for about nine years so one day in the off season I came to camp for a meeting decided yeah. to stay here overnight because it's a four hour drive back home and after work I was like okay you know what? I think I might go hit up the parkour park and go train a little bit and as I was driving my car over to that side of camp I saw that the uh, the skate boys they called the lost boys in the off season so they, <laughs> they just stay here at camp they maintain the property That'd and they sick. skate all through the through the off season Yeah. and I saw them all skating one of the skate parks and I always had my skateboard in the trunk so I was like you know what like screw it, I'm going to go skate with them Like instead of being alone yeah, in the yeah, yeah. parkour park. So cool. I ended up like riding with them for about two hours. This is my first time getting back on my board for a real session in well over three or four years. And it just, it was so much fun, man. Like the yeah. vibes were chill. We weren't like talking a ton, but it was just those good training vibes of just like I'm skating, you're skating. We're kind of watching each other go, hyping each other up. Mm. Energy's getting higher and higher. And I started connecting with them there and later on I came back and one of the guys told me I was like yo the skate directors like you man like, yo, they really they respect you at first you, you're you, accepted yeah you showed up with your skateboard they were like yo who the heck is this yeah yeah and then like you started skating a bit you had some tricks down and you kind of like you didn't fanboy or anything you just vibed out yeah and they were like yeah no, like they really respected that you took the time to come into their world and get to do what they were doing yeah and that just opened up the doorway for now when I talk to the skaters and I say like, hey man, like we're having a competition or hey, my parkour guys might run some lines through the skate park. They're like, yo, let them, tell them to come through. Like we love seeing that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just a matter of being polite and oh, that's the thing. I think it's a balance. connection. Yeah. Because I've seen it before where like, uh, I think Davis shared it. There was some skate Instagram channel when it like shared this parkour guy in the skate park and they were fucking ripping on him. Because really? he was like some guy like, sliding down like trying to do kind of like Jason Poole-esque movement in a oh, skate park right, really yeah. badly oh, and, the <laughs> and it was just getting so much hate and I can totally see why that's fucking annoying for skateboarders like if you turn up and there's some guy oh, like sure. flip-flopping around um, and it's here I think it's, there's this balance because I mean we've said before on the podcast the parkour park is uh, it's got its flaws it's actually I mean it's it, it is honest, really I've, diverse, I've had like, a lot of fun this year yeah we've got some good stuff yeah but. I haven't been here for two years and the first time I was here I wasn't really feeling it but this time like actually training with everyone right like, the park's the good energy, yeah. but yeah. like just it needs more you know I mean every, everyone, kind of, everyone knows it like, more. it needs yeah, more yeah. it's the colours it doesn't match with Woodward <laughs> yeah. they've obviously added more this year but so the thing about training in skate parks in my head I'm like well if we do a bit of training in skate parks and kind of show presence mm. hopefully the powers that be might be like hey these guys have kind of they need more like yeah, right. maybe we'll build a little because we were saying yesterday like imagine having I don't know down by the barn just a little parkour park that's just like, like a little bit like cause yeah. there's, there's how 
Fuck this. There's so 50, many like skate parks. 50, 50 skate parks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three gyms, yeah. one parkour. Park. Yeah, exactly. Like, and we're not we're not saying the skateboard is the same size, and therefore we need 15 parkour parks. But like a no. little bar set up down near Buds, yeah, or something else. Or just yeah, like, I mean, Joey and Jeff, we talked about getting a sand pit out. Hey, you see all this open grass right yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting a little sand pit, getting a couple blocks and a couple bars. Exactly. And, like yeah, just a little so extra many something. different themes. Yeah. Of, of like parks. Yeah, 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 that'd be so cool. And so that like the skaters and BMXers are riding around, and they like because the 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 peak, the parkour park, is kind of tucked away at the back. We're mm. in Whereas the if like they're riding kind of and they just see it and it's like, oh, sick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, getting us more in the open would be amazing. Those are things we're working towards. Like really, even like that new build that popped up there, that was, you know, I gotta thank Ron. He reached out to me, like called me up one day, like super last minute before camp's about to open. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, hey, like we were supposed to put the Ninja Warrior course here. We can't anymore. Do you want to build something like we have five days yes or no. and I was like of course please yeah, and Ron yeah, yeah. saw it where we saw it from where it was like the skateboarders every year they come they got a new section in one of the skate parks if you guys yeah. haven't noticed that but every year there's always a little that something cool. new for the skaters yeah. the gymnasts their facilities are always the same for the most part but yeah. the equipment is updated it, and yearly and also mm-hmm. they, they they have to as part of their sport they train on standardized equipment right, exactly. which yeah. we don't like for sure so. So, but he was like parkour park he's like we put you guys down here seven years ago and we haven't added any updates yeah. since. No, like, sure. Absolutely nothing. Sorry for the noise. I'm, I'm now opening my Nutrigrain bar. <laughs> Dude, is this a Nutrigrain sponsor? Sponsored, right? yeah, yeah. Sponsored like, by Nutrigrain. Like third time we've said Nutrigrain, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm not, I don't actually like him that much, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hungry. He's munching <laughs> down on it. Um, mm. the new, and yeah, they painted it the right color. Oh, yeah, the color, yeah. is, yeah. The color scheme is amazing. That's what I want. That's what I want. And I want to tack on the Woodward... Uh, you know, on the skate parks, there's the woodwork the edging. sticker. Yeah, the edging yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. So clean, I think that would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. As well as starting to get potentially some sponsorship up there. Because you go to the yeah. skate parks, you see Hot Wheels, you see GoPro, you yep. see Red Bull. That'd to start so cool. tacking on some parkour brands. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah. we have our little banners. We got the Olo. We got, <laughs> we got Strike <laughs> Movement. Strike Movement's pretty lit. I like Strike yeah. big time. I like, the, I like Mark. <laughs> I like Daryl. I like Carl Pally. Those guys are rad. Um, yeah. I like that Storm. Storm has sponsored our events, our Sick. um, our competitions. So, and then Breach this year. This was big Breach. Yeah, we had that sick. massive Breach banner there. Yeah. Um, I ended up with a suitcase full of their gear on accident. Thanks, <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> dropped the ball on that one, bro, but you made up for it. Wait, what did um, he do? He left it. Oh, you didn't hear this story no? yet. <laughs> All right, Arthur, I'm sorry, but I'm kind of blowing up your spot here I'm assuming um, you came out to Beast Coast and forgot it came out to Beast Coast didn't forget it um, so in the off season I talked to Chris and Chris was down to sponsor the event send out a few shirts and things for the kids that win prizes at the end of the week yep. so Arthur was supposed to bring some stuff to sell at Beast and then also give me a couple of pieces to bring back to Woodward yep. now at the end of the day I'm saying hey Arthur like you know did Chris talk to you tell you about what you're supposed to do he's like yeah 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 um, everything's in the red suitcase just you know take the red suitcase <laughs> and I was in such a rush my guys my team was rushing me out and they're ready to get into the car we got a big drive home so I'm like alright like the red suitcase yeah he's like yeah 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 yeah. like just um, you know take it everything's in there for you and I'm like alright cool I picked the suitcase up I'm going because my guys are calling I got like five bags on me like yeah. I just got a lot of equipment and a lot of things Kyle was also out there sponsoring Woodward for the summer and I get into my car, throw it all in, drive home. And when I get home, I finally look at my phone and Arthur's like, hey, did you uh, take that suitcase? And I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, oh. <laughs> and like, so I open up the suitcase and I look inside and there's just way too many pieces. Of yeah, yeah. There's like sweatpants, sweaters. Well, like everything hats, he was going to sell at Beast. Like everything, wow. t-shirts. And I'm just like, oh, man. So, you know, rather than mailing it back, I reached out to Chris. I was like, hey, you know what? Like, your stuff's already stateside. Yeah. The, um, the kids out here never get to touch and feel your stuff before they buy it. Is there, you know, like, I'll just sell it for you. Like, do you want me to sell it for you? Like, we'll just unload it here. This way, I figured it gets value to the parkour community because now I know personally I like to touch things yep. before yeah. I buy it. So now the kids get to touch and feel, and I'm not going to ship it back for you to ship it back over for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then when I came to Woodward, as I was here, um, I like also like had my own things I was selling. And it hit me that one day I was like, why don't I try putting this stuff in the skate shop? Like, you know, that way, like, because, you know, we are, as I got here, I found out that we can't, like staff shouldn't be selling things to the kids on the side. So we cut that down yeah. immediately. Like, so we don't sell things on the side anymore. Like, I just, I didn't know. Like, I was just 
kind of pushing this stuff out of my trunk at the yeah. end of the week because mm-hmm. it's the only place the kids could buy it from me. And figured, all right, let's get into the skate shop. And I was able to get my gear and Breach Gear into the skate shop as like the first two parkour brands. That's so and cool. It like when I first got like I got my stuff in there as a tester. Chris was still figuring out what prices he wanted to charge them yep. when I presented him the idea. So he took a little while to say yes to putting it into the store. So my stuff went in first, and the goal was to get my stuff in and out within like a day because I wanted to show Woodward that it has like legs, the conversation yeah. I had with them was like, hey guys, in the shop, in the shop, we represent gymnastics, we represent cheerleading, we represent skateboarding, we represent BMX, and we represent scooter. But there's nothing. There's for nothing absolutely nothing for the parkour campus mm-hmm. here where they feel like oh like there's representation for us like what are we teaching their mindset what are we teaching them about the future of the industry you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. there's no brand representation here so we got um my stuff in there in and out in one day like the campers loved it i gave them like a little talk about like what it means to support and i was just so happy that after that talk every last one of them went to the skate shop we sold out boom one day Sick. Awesome. Mad. Then when Chris finally said yes, and we got his stuff in there, unfortunately, the first week we got his stuff in there was a big G Champ week. So oh, really that said, little they talk about, really about yeah, it. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah. didn't care. But then the next week was a parkour week. Yeah, I had the conversation with them, and those kids went in, and I go into the skate shop later to check on the inventory, and they're like, "Dude, this, like, all of your kids came in here to start buying stuff." And here's the crazy thing. Skaters started buying breech gear as well. Really? And that is like really where I That's wanted. Mad. Like, once again, another one of the missions of camp was to get parkour recognized by the other action sports yeah, and yeah. the skate yeah, community. Yeah, yeah. Because how many of us are following skaters? How many of us are following Nigel Houston on Instagram and yeah. Scooter Kids? On, but how many of them are following any of us? Besides maybe Dom. Yeah, yeah. there's no like one, a select handful. But, right, but mm-hmm. no one's really following. Like, if they saw you guys' stuff, they would love it. If they saw Breach, they would love it. But mm. they're not aware of it yet. So sure. I'm trying to get all of that out. So like I said, there's a million little side missions going on here. <laughs> yeah. And like that's why I keep this notebook so I could keep it all contained. But getting his stuff in there today, I think... Everything is gone from the store as far as breech gear, except for maybe seven pop sockets. Sick. Um, so that's big in my eyes. And, that you know, I'm going to sit down in the off season and talk to them about next summer reing up on gear for parkour yep. and getting maybe, I want three to five brands in the store for the kids that so that the cool. community could grow. They can see that we're out there. They can just see that this thing isn't just being maintained because that's what it felt like for the last couple of years Mm -hmm. we were just maintaining and i don't believe in maintenance you're either growing or you're dying yeah Yeah. that's just my opinion but that's what i hold true as one of my core values so i'm all about the growth and seeing us get there and working i know that it only happens from putting in the work and just creating the opportunities like learning to be an opportunity creator is what i've been doing with the last three months or not even the last six months of my life, like mm-hmm. trying to figure out how to do that so we can I can create a platform for this community, for the athletes to build the infrastructure. This is a billion dollar industry with no infrastructure built or very little yeah. Yeah. infrastructure built. So we can't really tap the mines. We can't tap into the, the oil wells yeah, of yeah, our yeah. community. Just at, um, I mean, you've obviously got your notebook here, which I've, I've, you, you are very list driven like me, but I think you take it to another fucking level. Like, I think you are planning and, and sculpting and, and yeah, and to, yeah, because I mean, I brought my, I brought my list book here and, and I've used it a couple of times because on, in this mode, I'm just like, yeah, cool. We'll, we'll relax and we'll do whatever. Yeah. Uh, regarding like your roles just here. Are you, I feel like you have a lot of things to do, and you have, you keep talking about these like side missions and things. Like, what's <laughs> what's an actual role as a job role from Woodward, and then also what are like? If it, it feels like you've got a hundred fingers in a hundred pies, like, Dude, I pies. Mean, it really it does feel like that to me as well. Um, that's a great question because and how do you remember the kids' names on top of all that? Oh god! This is the other thing. I'm so, I'm bad enough with like a ten people's names. Like yeah, I dude. see you like, hey Timmy, hey Joey, how you doing? <laughs> Give me a high five, Jason. I'm like Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, <laughs> no man. Like um, you know, as far as the official director role here, that was actually something I asked when I applied for the job. Like just saying like, hey, what? is it that a director actually does at Woodward because I am interested in the position but I'm actually not quite sure what it is you would want of me so I don't want to say I'm the guy for the job because I don't know, know what the yeah. job truly entitled, entails yet yeah. um, 
I was told I would get a write up of kind of the job description. It never came. Um, <laughs> that sounds called I would would. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I, I love this place. This is not me bashing it at all. Mm. There's just so many moving parts here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, an interesting thing. So this is where we're about to go in a little bit. We're gonna unveil some secrets. Um, you know, like it's requested or promoted that you know directors are always willing to help, always willing to jump in there, do the dirty work, lead by example, which I am all for and all about. And you'll see a lot of our directors getting in there doing that. I took that a little too far this summer and was just like, I was way too involved in the department. And I even like, I sat down and had a meeting with my staff last night for a good hour or two. And like, I had to apologize to them at uh, some point because I told them, I was like, you know, I screwed up big time and I failed you guys big time because I have been way too involved in this department all summer long. I've been showing up to every instruction and mandatory, every open gym. Oh, so you technically don't actually have to like... I have to, they put me on five. So there's... 15 sessions yeah i'm technically being paid for five of those sessions okay. i've been pretty much at all 15 as well as wow. interacting with them in between and then doing Jesus. these sort of things like this interview like this isn't like a part of the job description this is just what i see yeah, will help yeah, yeah. the program and community grow bigger and better um so i've been so involved that you know around five weeks in i burnt out Big time. I was going to say, Bad. yeah, I mean, that's... Oh, you were yeah. telling me about that. Actually. Oh, yeah, dude, that yeah. burnout was probably the worst burnout I ever experienced in my life. I'm talking, I it was hot outside and I'm shivering. I go inside the ACs, I'm breaking into a hot sweat. At night, I try to lay down to sleep. My back was like spazzing. I used to get like sciatic nerve pain. Oh, yeah. That started coming back to me out of nowhere. I wasn't training, so it's like I know I didn't fall or anything like that. It was just my yeah, body's just, just too down. much. Like, like, I was trying to sleep. I couldn't sleep and... The only thing that remedied it was getting into my car and driving back to New York and staring at the wall for three days. Like, just <laughs> oh completely getting away from people. Because mm. I'm just here, you have nonstop human interaction. It is like, um, you, there's nowhere, even just trying to, we're just trying to find a room to do this podcast. Right. And just trying to find somewhere we can guarantee you won't have somebody walking through it for the next hour and a half. Right, because yeah. there's insane, over like, a thousand people here, you yeah. know, like, and it's 98 acres, but still, like, thousand people that are action sport oriented on bikes and wheels. They oh, get they're going to get around quickly. fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, um, as far as job description, you know, like, they really, they, it wasn't very clear. So, getting into this role in the beginning, I was making mistakes left and right, you know. I wasn't being told about things, or maybe I wasn't. I just wasn't. It was too much information for my brain to hold on to. Yeah. So, the first week, you know, I'm getting texts like, why are you late to the meeting? What meeting? Yeah. Where is it? When's it happening? So, then, like, the next week, I show up to where the meeting was last week, and meetings in digital media today like why aren't you here I'm like where are we announcing this my cell gets no service around here yeah, yeah, so yeah. i'm living in like the area where i live in at night like i don't have wi-fi or service so i'm not getting group messages until the next morning when i wake up and mm. i should be getting it at night so i know where to be in the yeah. morning and it was just all these little things here and there and there was nobody in my role to kind of guide me and teach me beforehand i'm the only department that has a single director. Every other department has multiple directors. Oh, uh, okay. So years. no, no one was here to like right. pass the baton. And then now. Henry, you guys know Henry. You guys yeah, yeah. hang out with him. He was. Um, he's also like he's his technical role is lead, but I consider him a director through and through. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to talk to them about making him such, so he has the official title. He feels like he should be it. He, he should, yeah, really, yeah, I thought yeah. it was you and Henry, really, right? Right. And yeah. he really, I when I tell the kids, I'm like Henry's a director as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Because he has a walkie, you could go to him with the problems, and he knows what to do. Yeah. Um, but he didn't come along till week four. So mm. I was here for the first four weeks alone. Yeah, this is Henry Blue, by the way, who we're hoping to get on very soon because he's developing Parkour's for Well, not first video game, nah, but he's making but his own video it, game. Isn't, it, isn't so it Parkour's sick. first video game by a Parkour athlete? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, we'll go, we're, we, he's really keen to come on, so we're going to try and sort that out. Yeah, Henry is a treat. He is a delight. Yeah. Absolute delight. Yeah, he's sick. Huh? Yeah, so, um, but Henry came along week four and like finally helped relieve some of the pressure. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's gone for these last two weeks, so I'm back to being alone, but now I feel like I have a better grip on things. Yeah. And like I said, I apologize to my guys because I'm learning. As a director, my job isn't necessarily to be in the department it's to work on the department from the outside and give it and feed the things it needs getting my staff the training they might need yeah you know like Mm -hmm. i have a standard for them but i realized i never got the time to or made the time to teach them how to adhere to that standard and i want them interacting and communicating with the kids outside of training Mm -hmm. and that's a tough thing for them to do because we don't want to burn them out either yeah what i found really impressive is like your I mean, I've only seen a, a glimpse of it, but 
my movement. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, so, uh, like, your, essentially, like, your leadership skills are, well, I don't know, I just, I like, we were training at the was, park yesterday. Was it when, the, for about the Ninja Warrior? Stuff? Well, you know, you were holding that meeting mm. yesterday, and you right. talked to the guy, and I could kind of get a vibe that there was a bit of, like... Tension? A little bit yeah. of tension, yeah, but also, and then just seeing you talk to the guys other times, but also then seeing you talk to your, your athletes, because Marlon has his own brand called Witness This. Um, how many athletes do you have? We have on that at, on that team. We have Sam Wiseman, Nick Campbell, Paulie, Marco, Sam. It's a monster. Sam, if, what's his next surname? Sam Wiseman. Sam Wiseman. If you don't, if you're not aware, he's a freak. Well, he's freak not a freak of nature. He's dude. a wise man. He works hard too. Like he's talent. He, makes, he's what talent looks like when it works hard. Like yeah, that's the yeah, epitome yeah, yeah. of like talent. He is hard. a next level athlete. Eats a bit too much cereal though. <laughs> I mean, dude, all of you like elite athletes are sugar fiends, man. Like, I've been I've been watching Woodward, bro. I watch all the elite athletes across the board sugar fiends yeah 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 like anyone like want to try and dispute that like the food here is tough to like get away from the sugar I think yeah oh that's all they give you yeah like. but yeah so I, I've just noticed that like compared to someone like me like I feel like I should be in a role where I'm with the guys like and in a scenario like this there's the athletes and they're all 18, 19 now so I'm kind of like well I don't want to be some boss man but also I like I have aspirations for the brand. I have aspirations for them, and I'm like, oh, maybe I should like take them aside and be like, hey, why are you why are you not training so much today? Or like, what's what's up? Like, blah blah. blah. But I don't because I'm kind of, I, d- I don't know. I don't know if I should <laughs> be stepping into those shoes. Mm. With you, I've seen you like step into these leadership skills uh, uh, shoes and like and have sit down talks with people and and boost them up and things. And I can hear these things stuff you're saying, and I'm like, shit. Like, d- I mean, is did you? Have you always been like that? Is that something you had to learn or teach yourself? Like, man, I like I appreciate hearing you say that. That is probably like one of the best compliments I've <laughs> ever gotten in my life because that is something I work towards. And on the previous episode, if you guys are listening to this on my platform, you heard that episode I did with E. Morris, and you hear me talk about everyone kind of wants to be the Red Ranger. Like, I've always wanted to be the Red Ranger. Or not everyone, but a lot of people want to be the Red Ranger, right, right, from Power Ranger. So he was the middle one. They want to be the leader. Yeah, okay. Um, And a lot of people don't quite understand what it means to be that leader and how scary of a role that it can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I started thinking to myself, like, okay, like, I do want to be a leader. I want to be the Red Ranger. I've always wanted to be the Red Ranger, and I acknowledge that. Have you ever done the personality test, the, like, 16 personality Yeah, I have, actually. Did you come out as leader? I came out as a protagonist. I, like... um, that was like Oprah Winfrey, uh, okay, Obama, yeah, yeah. Barack. Because um, I came out as leader, and I was like, "Oh, fire!" I, but I was like, I, "Really? Like, I, <laughs> am I?" <laughs> like, I got that thing like on my phone, right and I like now. read through all the stuff, and I'm like, "I can see that kind of." But also, no, like, yours was yours was very. It, but yeah, you. when they when you did the, the it, video summary, it was like there were so many things. I was like, it was the little fair things. Play. It was the little things where it was like you don't agree with certain. Yeah, there were like yeah. certain things. But yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like maybe I need to be doing more like a homework or, or even trying harder to maybe become slightly more of a leadership role i don't know like because I'm, I'm i always have that fear of like if i was to say sort of go like oh keelan like i feel like i've been really pulling your weight like i sort of blah 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 like sort of what's up da, da, da. like i feel like you should be doing this it's like well what do i why why do i have the right to say that kind of thing um uh, and i mean i guess i guess you are officially in a leadership position because it is a cr- like it's your job, right? Right. So I mean, there's a little bit more justification, whereas like now Keelan's 19 and I, I haven't paid for his trip here. So it's really, if he just goes, oh, fuck off, I'm not doing any training this week. <laughs> I'll be a bit like, Keelan, you should probably get some clips, but I can't really force that. Right. And I, it's that balance, yeah. I mean, like definitely like leadership is, sorry about that, guys. Uh, leadership is definitely like something I've studied immensely. Like yeah. really trying to take this role as serious as possible, do this to the best of my ability to prepare my guys for this, to prepare them to be leaders for the future. You know, like, I have um, core values that, like, are big for a witness to this sort of brand. And if you guys look at this uh, lanyard, I have, like... I oh, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> like, impact, transformation, leadership, integrity, and execution. Like, these are core values Sick. that, like, mean a lot to me because with the guys, like, on the team that I'm leading, with the campers here, like, the goal is to teach them to be leaders in their own right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah recognizing that at some point that even means like I pass the mantle to them and allow them to lead me and I'm a follower yeah. and I know what it's like to already be a follower so now I'm learning what it means to be a great leader and who are the people I follow I follow the people that keep it honest with me like 
tell me like, yo, if we're lost, they admit like, yo, I don't know where we're going, but I think this is the best direction. I'm going to start walking in it. You can follow me or not. Mm. Like, don't yeah, follow yeah, me. Yeah. And those are the people like, they don't force me to follow. I choose to follow. Yeah. Those are true leaders. Those are the people that are willing to be vulnerable with you. And they might not always know the right answer, but they try their best to have integrity and do the right thing for the group. So even with my guys, for instance, like, you know, you just said you're not paying Keelan to be here. Like, mm. my guys, I sat down with them for the last week or two, and I told them, oh, my guys, like, I'm not in a place yet where I could pay you anything monetarily. Like, I can't, you know, like, all the money we make from, like, little shirt sales and events mm. and things like that, like, it goes right back into the brand to yeah. grow it some more. So, like, I don't have the money yet to put you on payroll. However, I and paying you in the sense of opportunity. I'm yeah, going to create yeah, yeah. opportunity for you. I'm going to show you how to make this thing from the ground up. You're going to watch me make it. You could be a part of making it with me. You're going to gain experience that you won't be able to gain anywhere mm. else. I'm going to put you in contact with some of the best people. Like They were stoked to meet you guys this year. And like A part of them coming week 9 and 10 was planned. I wanted them to come to yeah. meet you guys. I wanted them to come they're to such meet Joey guys. and Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're great humans, man. Mm. Like, I Are love they all local to you? They're all local to me. We're all in New York. Yeah, um, sick. Like, Sam's the furthest one away from us. He lives, like, an hour up um, uh, okay. upstate from me. So, like, when we were filming a project before camp, I was, like, riding out to him every day to go film this project. And I told uh, him, I was like, guys, like, if you show me you're serious, I will do what it takes yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. take you. Like, and I sit down with them, and I basically my way of paying them is tell me what it is you want. Let yeah. me know what it is you're working for, and I'm going to figure out how I can help you do that. And if mm. I can't... I let him know, like, all right, dude, I can't do anything for you in that department. So if you need to go outside of me and go so to someone else, go there. Like, there will be no ill will from me. You know, like, I tell Sam all the time, like, dude, you're an amazing athlete. Like, if you ever want to sign with another team or, like, another team wants you, don't feel like you owe me anything. Mm, go yeah. with them. You know, I tell that to all of the guys. Like, fought, like our guy, Nick Amblo, he at one point wanted to quit parkour and he did to go pursue football he's mm. young he's oh, in really? school those boys are some of them are 16 years old and he wanted to go do it and he was afraid to say that because he felt like he was letting the team down he felt like he was letting yeah. me and steven down because we'd coached him since he was 10 11 years old mm. no nine years old excuse me and you know we told him like dude go like as long as you're following your passion that's what you're actually doing you're not doing yeah. parkour you're following your dream you're following your passion and it sounds cliche but like no nah, that's what we're all living for isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's not just like I don't want to see someone like doing the motion of parkour and filming feeling like okay this is what I'm doing like, I'm just filming parkour it's like no like you're documenting yourself follow your dream you're documenting yeah. yourself live the life you want to live yeah and that's what you should act in my opinion should actually be doing and that's what like when i look at you guys that's what you're doing versus mm. when i watch another video on the guys the movers are great but i'm like you guys just seem like you're just going through the motion of it all mm. you, know, you don't yeah, genuinely yeah, yeah. seem that invested in your own activity yeah. yeah you know that was a really interesting thing i uh, i don't know if i read it or heard it that was um i think i think i was on a podcast or something this this guy was talking about what he when he hires clients uh, not, not clients. Uh, uh, like employees? Yeah, employees. And he brings them onto his team. He asks them two questions. And he says, uh, what is it that you have to give the company? Like, what is it that you can give? And what is it, like, that you will give? And then the... And it's, and it's kind of do that in a hundred words or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's... And what is it that you selfishly... Like, what do you want... So you, it's did, it, you did this to you. Yeah, awesome. I, I he put it, asked us. I put it in the WhatsApp yes. group. And the problem with our WhatsApp group is only half the people then replied. Yeah, but, um, that's beautiful. But yeah, so it, and and hopefully there should be able to be a balance so that like Keelan could say, hey, I want to give this. I've got this much time. I, I want to be this as an athlete, and I want to do this on the side. And I'm yeah. like, cool. Well, in return, like, and it might not be financial, but it's like, oh, well, I can do this and this and this. And you, to to have a good relationship, you should be able to achieve a balance with each person on the team. And, it, and if, if somebody wildly is like, I want 10 grand a month and a new camera and this, and I don't want to do anything, we're like, well, this isn't going to work. Right. So This relationship just between us doesn't. Also, yeah. there's a really good book called um, Ooh, writing notes. Leaders Eat Last. I've heard of that book. Yeah, by Simon Sinek. Simon Sinek? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. It's got some really cool, like stories of people who have done kind of impactful things whether it be the, the one that sticks out in my mind i think it's right at the start of the book actually is a which makes it sound like i haven't read it but i haven't because i listened to it on an audio book but uh <laughs> so reading it now this days. this guy who uh he he's a fighter pilot and he saves like uh, his whole like squad basically by taking action that sh was not necessarily the right 
action to take, but it was the right action in the moment kind of thing. It went against loads of like training and things. Um, but yeah, I mean, leaders eat luck. Like that sentence is the kind of the key thing there in sense of like to be a good leader, you don't necessarily have to be sort of living the dream. Like it, yeah, it's, mm, it's, right. you sacrifice exactly the opportunity yeah. for your followers. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, you know, like and like I like what you just said about you know asking what is it that you can give and what is it that you want because you know like even like this is like kind of where like I need to apologize to you guys as you guys came in like we just in the beginning when you first got the camp I didn't have time to really sit down with you guys and like get the vibe and just talk where everyone else I normally do that with yeah um, I just was you guys caught me on like a very busy week and like it was the biggest weekend to be fair so we that was knackered. I mean kids yeah, as well. you guys we just come in and we were like oh where's, yeah, where yeah, do yeah. we sleep and how many 86 kids 86 kids last week yeah. biggest week we've ever biggest had biggest park all week and Sick. um you know like even like two days before you got here I was like hey like you want to do this film project and like the like, like yeah, I just threw yeah, it at yeah. you last minute and what I wanted to ask you guys too was like yo you know like are you actually like interested in doing this not just hey do you feel like you owe me something because i got like i was part of helping get you to camp um you know would this interest you like would this give you any value like because obviously it would help us out yeah, it would yeah give yeah, us yeah. value but like would you guys get anything from this do you does it resonate with you does because if it doesn't then it's like you know what? let's not do it because you guys heard me when i was talking to my guys last night like mm-hmm. When the energy feels like I feel energy, I speak energy before I speak English. Yeah. You know? like, so like, if the energy isn't right and the vibes aren't right, like I don't like feeling like I'm forcing things. Yeah. And it's like yeah, like all right, maybe like we just don't do this together now. That's all. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, one was a tough one. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's tough with that stuff like that because I think every in in the ideal scenario, it's all everyone's keen. Yeah. Um. I think so. What we well, what I found interesting, and I think was kind of what I felt from the the guys as well, is like it would be there was a couple of days earlier in the week where you were like okay well let's meet at 4.30 and we'll film and we'll get everyone will get a line from 4.30 till 5 and then we get there and like by the time people are warm it's 5 o'clock and then people have already rolled in and it was very like a level of pressure I guess of like kind of almost ticking stuff off a list which and it's weird because I love it's in some scenarios I love that list ticking like Mm. you go cool task done cool task done and we use it sometimes on shoots but mainly if we've like if we're location based and we've pre scouted, right? You've yeah, prepped it yeah. mentally, yeah. And such. Um, and, but sometimes I think the pressure, especially for some of the guys, is just they don't work like that. Like, and then I mean, we went out last night for like an hour or so, and we've mm-hmm. got four like incredible lines that just came out of nowhere. Right, I heard you got the cake. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how we work. At yeah, <laughs> working on cakes. But um, yeah, so it's it's it is interesting to sort of see what dynamic works at the the right time right yeah. and that's where like it felt like time was crunching because i'm in a very much the same boat where like the list my guys had time to prepare yeah they've been at camp for this was their second week for them and then you guys had just got in and yeah, yeah that's yeah. where like i started to recognize like all right like we're just currently like everyone's like trying to match up and get onto the same vibe mm-hmm. and just it it like as it finally happened my guys had to go yeah just, I was yeah, saying was earlier so like savage. last night felt like the first day and we've been here four days now like four or five days the first day where everything was really rolling right because I think it's just that it's not you don't really get jet lag coming it's only five hours but it's just enough to make you just feel like right. you're not quite on it and you gotta you gotta get tuned in like, and, and I, I as well, get it yeah. man I, like I truly I truly get it like there's just sometimes not enough time in a day and enough I heard time the guy have. doing the skate talk last night and he said to all the kids he was like the days are long, but the yeah. weeks move fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, and that, I was like, that shit, time. that is literally That's it. That's camp, like, dude, right yeah. there, dude. Like, the days are long and the weeks are short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, very, so very it's, true. Yeah, it's no. big. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I definitely want some questions for you guys. And perhaps this is where, if you're listening to um, this on my platform, this is where I kind of hit a break. And this is the part two. So, welcome back for part two. Now I'm going to kind of grill you guys. <laughs> with some questions Ooh, okay. before we jump in can i run to, down to that little toilet oh he's gonna go hit that toilet. <laughs> uh, there's always there's always a piss break dude you got it he's got, got the it. smallest bladder yeah, no that's okay. all right you know that's, that's right. one of the rules in the game the guy sent me the game oh yeah did yeah. you know about this Marlon? no 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 what, some, what some guy sent in like he'd obviously listened to the podcast loads and he made some like drinking game for the podcast like no oh way. every time keelan replies with oh really oh, or really? every time giles cuts in while I'm talking or a piss break and you have to take a drink or something so apparently they're going to make that a proper game <laughs> oh my god that's going to be fun it'd be Yo, so so funny 
I mean, I mm-hmm. feel like it's probably at minimum, maybe one to two drinks. Yo, you just got to drink heavy as well, that's all. Yeah. Like, get some, like, shots of tequila or something. Shots of tequila like- and then listen to the podcast and wait until you hear it. Because I'm pretty sure, because I don't listen to the podcast myself. Cause, oh, like, no. No, I don't know. I just uh, you know, listen to listening to myself. Dude, like that's crazy. Wait, so you've never listened back on I've, one of your own I, episodes? I actually have never listened back to a full one You have to do it because it's, it's, yeah. I did it once. It's going to blow your mind yeah, like, yeah. hearing yourself speak and being like, I don't even remember saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But like, clearly, that's me. That's my voice. Mm-hmm. Those are like the things I think. And it's interesting because yeah, when the we things talk you think long, in the moment. Yeah, like mm-hmm. we just like we forget what we even talk. Or at least I forget what I talk about. Yeah, I can't yeah. even tell you guys what Back. the first topic was of this whole podcast. Like, yeah, don't it just goes so quickly. I, but I, you I listen present, to a handful, so. I reckon. Sometimes like if we've had a good one with a guest or sometimes if we do a podcast in the evening, mm. sometimes we have a couple of drinks and then you kind of wake up the next morning. You're like, did I say anything stupid? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Anyway. So questions. now uh, let's get you guys all right, with all right. some questions. This is Marlon's book with paragraphs. Uh, yep, I like I write these questions out, so you know if it seems a little formal, like no worries, no worries. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see. All right, so like at this point, right, we have most of the community knows Modus. We view you guys as a brand <laughs> that's relatively successful. That's pretty much you guys are doing it from the out th- outside. Things look nice and clean. Like, <laughs> most people always look and see like, yo, like that brand is doing it. Like, yo, Ferrang is banking. They must be billionaires. By yeah, 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 yeah. billionaires. Modus, billionaires. Um, you know, like I want to know, kind of what do the day to day activities kind of look like within the organization as far as like from a business standpoint. Mm. Uh, I feel like you two like would on be the, the ones inside. That kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. In I'm, the stress. I mean, where I, I'm like, <laughs> I was never really like involved as much as this as I am right now. Um, I think like it was, since the start, it, almost it was, since the podcast, like started. This yeah, year, maybe. I think it was also like when Spitting in the Wind came out. If right. you saw that, yeah. So like when that happened, and then I got injured. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I just didn't know what to do with myself, so I just decided to. Well, you kind of gave me the opportunity yeah, to kind of work good. more with inside the brand. Um, and then like yeah I know I'm I'm at yours like three times a week yeah typically oh, nice. about three days a week yeah so. uh, sometimes grinding away sometimes accidentally slipping onto the PS4 <laughs> <laughs> but you know but the head the head's still in the right place yeah yeah um, but Giles is doing a lot I mean day to day is like there's obviously your general things which are just kind of social media upkeep and stuff which I think I st- uh, the brand could be doing a lot more of um, but it it has enough present thankfully we well, we have eight athletes and therefore you can kind of take like you can you can reshare their stuff if they're as long as they're all out doing bits then the content to reshare mm-hmm, and, right. and you can always resort back to the generalized like clothing posts which sometimes are effective and and sometimes are a bit boring uh it's it's the, the hard thing that i struggle with with regards to social media is like how much to be just clothing focused which generates sales mm. or but it but it only generates sales to a degree like or how much do you you reshare content and have organic content of of movement which generates followers right. and growth because no one wants to follow a page that's just sharing t-shirts right mm-hmm. oh, i mean that being said Stora have obviously set up their Stora store page which is just their clothing stuff um as a kind of segregation of that and and maybe that is the way to do it if if the most sort of page got bigger then you would have an individual one just for just the, the clothes. clothes but um so there's a little bit of upkeep there I mean, this year has been crazy just in terms of, like, a lot of growth. It's all growth behind the scenes. Like, I don't really feel like we've done a huge amount in the in the public eye, um, which is weird because I think that's where my, like, head game slipped because I'm like, oh, shit, we're not doing anything. Like, we haven't done any cool trips, and you see kind of all these other people jetting off and doing things, and I'm like, oh, shit. It's, we've had some serious not struggles but it's core struggles between moving to this new factory which is still taking a long time and i'm so confident that once everything is rolling it'll now be rolling smoothly and we've we've kind of had to make some decisions in the last month that will delay certain clothing things and push things back and, and stuff like that but it's all kind of for the greater good um so there's generally a bit of factory upkeep to do like now that we're running multiple collections throughout the year with them I'm communicating with them at least every couple of days, just going over samples that, I mean, samples for stuff like for autumn, winter 2020, like, cause we want to be ahead of the game. Cause at the end of the day, we want to scale, we want to move into retail and et cetera, et cetera. So like we have to be six months to a year ahead. Yeah. Um, and then 
generally we're trying to produce weekly content with YouTube, which... It's difficult. It's difficult. We delegate it to the athletes, and then once one person slips up, then everyone, everyone starts knows. to slip it's up. It's consistency. It's like, because obviously all of your guys are quite close, relatively right. close, like yeah. where you live, but as we're all in different parts of England, and Jordan's not even in England, he's in Norway. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's quite hard to get all of us together to make a video, and if not, there'll be no video on the channel until one pops up, and it will just be like a solo video. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we're still trying to figure out how we can meet up we did a lot of like content planning at the start of the year, which is kind of where this podcast came about. But yeah. a lot of what we wrote down hasn't necessarily taken action yet. Mm. Um, because I think we, we as people and as a brand, we don't just want to churn out like mindless vlogs as much as they are quite good to just, they're quite quick to do. Mm. Um, if, if we're all together, then it's fun. But if it's like, we don't want to just say to Max, like, Hey, go out and film a vlog. Cause right. it's just, yeah. there's only so much you can do to keep that thing entertaining. Um, so there's it's yeah it's it's a balance of clothing content creation general management of the back end of of funds etc etc like just the business side of things um i've had a ball like over the last six months moving from an old accountant who was shafting me financially over to a new accountant and all this stuff which has cost the company a ton of money and it's just like and then 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 you instantly have cash flow issues regarding clothing and yeah, there's, I think this year has just been a financial nightmare, but it's not not it's not breaking us yet. <laughs> oh, We're still going. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then yeah, typically uh, travel and trips and events and stuff like that. I've I mean this is the second time I've the second time both of us. This have is literally this year. The, yeah the second trip yeah. we've done this year. Last year we had done so, so many. many yeah, but I mean yeah, generally trying to hit up our, hit up as many events as possible. When we um, go to events and we're all together, that's when it starts getting like, yeah, like yeah. this, like Woodward, because we're all together. Yeah. It's so sick. And especially that we haven't seen each other for quite a while or been in the same place. And nice. I think that's why the video is suddenly just, Happen, you know, you know, right. like how, yeah, when you capture stuff and it's just natural because it is just happening. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. We're like, work, to anyone listening, we're working on kind of a longer form piece for the ooh, end of beautiful. this America thing, yeah. um, as well as a video for Woodward specifically as well, which is mm -hmm. cool because they've given us that opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a lot of juggling, really. It's interesting. Some days I feel like I simply there's too much to do. Um, <laughs> thankfully, I've managed to delegate a few things, like packing orders. I now don't have to go near um, a lot of the financial stuff. I don't have to touch because of accountancy and bookkeeping and things. But in this switchover, there's just been havoc. Um, there was a period like late last year or early this year where I genuinely just was like, I don't know how to. To de I, I don't know how to deal with all of this because the company doesn't have enough money to pay someone to come on board and like handle all of this but it needs to still be done um, what I'm trying to do is get the brand to a position where it's sort of self-sufficient and working to a level where I can then pull out slightly and focus more on just creative because um, I think that's where my strengths lie like general not necessarily marketing because I don't think I'm the best marketer but general management of the brand and creative and then the financials the forecasting all of that is taken on by somebody else um it's just it's not it's not what i enjoy and I, what i've discovered is if i don't enjoy doing something i can only do it for so long before it just fucks me in the head right like and if and if i'm not doing enough like creatively and, and stuff like that so it's trying to it's a balance no and i, I get that like that's big you know i almost am curious as to how much of this experience of creating Modus have you learned that, okay, I need to start developing, like, business skills? Like, is that a, like was that a very conscious thought for you? Like, I, so oh, I, shoot, I need, to be a, I need to learn how to be a businessman. Like, yeah, I, I literally hired a business advisor. Okay. Last, no, t a year and a half, two years ago, I got to the stage where I was so aware that the company was, like, so much bigger than me. And the problem is I would t talk to the people around me, which would either be the guys or like my mom or my girlfriend or things and then then they're incredibly biased because you're like you're like okay we're doing this many thousands in revenue every month this is happening this is happening like it's ticking over like we're we're doing sort of like the postage is being handled and things but i was like i just in my head i was like i feel like there are aspects of this business that i don't understand and that could be improved and then I got this guy on board and he just tore the sh 
fucking lid off of it. <laughs> yes. It was like, he was like, you need to fucking fix this. This is bullshit. Fix this. Like after my first meeting with him, I was like, oh my fucking God. And like days prior to that, I would have just been like thinking normally. Right. Uh, but in just in terms of growth and scale uh, and, and just actually how to run a business, like I didn't know anything. I went from just being a self-employed cameraman, essentially, cameraman, uh, under, technically we had a business, which was Visive, but it didn't actually, it, it was just me. Like it was just a business bank account that was just essentially as if I was being paid by like self-employed. So I, I knew fucking nothing. So I hired this guy and, and now I feel so much more level-headed about it, but it's still just not my forte. Like, awesome. So, so would you say he's, is he teaching you or are, is he kind of, almost like managing in the shadows and no, like he, he, so whispering he's, like the right thing to say to the girl. And, nah, <laughs> nah, so he, he came on, I used to see him once every couple of weeks um, at, the, at the start, like, because when he came in, I was just like, hey, I need help, basically. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And he was like, cool, I'm a financial, a business advisor. Like, I'll come in and take a look at things. So he, I used to meet up with him periodically. Now it's much more like I just catch up with him every so often. Nice. Um, it's, yeah, like it's it's weird. I'm now at this position where I almost would love to have someone else involved in the company who was just essentially a partner on the financial side of things. And now I've said that, I'll probably get people messaging me on Instagram and being like, <laughs> what? You know what? Me. Yeah. What? it's good. Give me access you, to the bank account. I think it's good that you do that because then I think you're starting to recognize, and this is all things I'm learning from like growing my own thing and studying a lot. Yeah that you're starting to recognize, okay, there are things about running a business, like there are systems that need to be worked. And a lot of times people make the mistake of, all right, I'm doing this, this, and this, and this, and this. Like the business is just, in a sense, them. Yeah. And where the business should be a series of systems, and it doesn't matter who runs the system, like the system should be able to be ran and you should be able to pull and play who goes in that position. Uh, yeah. And you need to recognize when, although you might be the owner of the you're the video guy, but when you put on the team manager hat, now you're wearing the team manager hat and you're doing the team manager job. So you're one individual doing mm -hmm. two jobs, not just one individual doing one big job of running the business, yeah, yeah, recognizing yeah, yeah. the multiple jobs that are actually going on in place, which seems like you've been doing with the guys of kind of delegating. I mean, like Keelan, like from the outside, it seems like you've been coming in and taking a little bit more responsibility, more role. Yeah. I think also that with Keelan, like what's been beneficial and it's, I don't think we've done a huge amount of it, but we've definitely spoken about it is that like, I mean, I'm 29, the guys are 18, 19, as much as I get on with them as if we're best mates, I understand there are certain things where I sometimes fall more into like a dad position or like a, yeah, like a, not, <laughs> not that, a dad position. I know that. Do you know though. what I mean? Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, you see my oh, team, the 16 year yeah, old, yeah, yeah. like yeah. I'm 26. Old like, man, Giles. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> but sometimes having Keelan who I can kind of be like, hey, Keelan, can you like suggest this to the guys? And he'll sort of be like, hey, let's do this. Sometimes. And it, it sometimes comes, if I can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it comes from someone their own age. Right. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think that's that's really beneficial to have. And it's not just sort of exclusive to Keelan like that. I can speak to them all mm. on that level. It's just because Keelan it's it's just one of those like chance yeah, someone on the inside. Keelan's yeah. local <laughs> and therefore it's just it's just how it happens. Yeah. Um But yeah, I I it is weird. It's the the last few months I've just been like, actually if someone stepped up and was like, Hey, I wanna come on board and run the business side of things and I still still owned the thing but stepped more into a role of like I would happily have someone you for example and be like hey Marlon I've got this idea for Soul Destroyer or like okay I've got this new collection it's called Soul Destroyer I want to do this many items I want to do this level of production and video beside it blah, 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 blah. like do we have the cash for that I kind of don't enjoy sitting in that position of going like oh okay we've got this much money for this and we need to delegate this and this and this like it's just not it's it's just yeah it's, it doesn't feel like my calling in life to be some like financially minded person mm. i've never been particularly good at making my own personal money i kind of just want to like where where am i even going like with this? outsource that kind of work yeah like and, and i I've, I've now done sort of just more I try, I try and do as much reading and Sorry. research into business and, and things and I, I've realised that that dynamic does exist a lot more than oh, you would oh heck yeah man yeah like, Ben and Jerry's is an interesting one like I listened to a podcast with them on it and uh, they were saying that kind of one of them was just always the guy with the book he was just always like oh can't afford that can't right. afford that like <laughs> um, yeah 
But you know, you're describing like your start. It's from my point of view, it seems like you're describing what it takes to create a successful, sustainable business because now you're recognizing, okay, like these are the parts. You're seeing the business as parts. Yeah, that yeah, need totally. To be, like how the car needs all the parts running, and like you may not want to be the guy that works on transmissions, but you know the car needs a transmission. Yeah. And you may not want to be the guy that works on the exhaust, but you recognize the car needs an exhaust, and there's a specialist for that, and you kind of want to plug and play different specialists and. You know, like that will allow the business to grow that much bigger, better. Yeah, um, I think the hardest thing is out. is like in this position, it's like where well, you want someone who's involved with the sport. And sort of, no offense to the guys, but if Keelan suddenly said, "Oh, I'm going to come in. I I, I want to step up and take control of the money management," I'd be like, "I'd be like, really? <laughs> like, are you sure about that?" Yeah. Um, I, I feel like parkour is a really hard pool of people Ooh, to yes. to pull. Like everyone wants to be the athlete, or they want to yep. be the creative. There's very few people who are like, "Hey, I'm a parkour guy, and I, I'm interested in business, actual business." Oh my god, like, you're, you're hitting on something right now, Jazzy. Really, because <laughs> like, this is something like there's a conversation I've been having with my guys over and over. Cause I'm really digging it into their heads, especially while some of them are young. That cool, you're all great athletes. Yeah, that's your skill number one. What's your skill number two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're not even going to focus on skill number three yet. What's skill number two? Yeah. And, like, if you tell me you don't have one yet, that's a problem. Because now you're a bit of a one-trick pony. And I think and, the obvious thing yeah. at the moment is athlete and creative, i.e. video photo. Right. Those but are, a lot of people don't realize they have to actually work hard at the video photo. Right. You can't yeah, just make yeah. something that's good in that, the parkour community. Like, it's... Yeah. Yeah. It's its own skill. Like, the same way you worked, you know, years on the movement, on the precision, on the flip, on the everything you need to now go look at this other skill and go learn it just as uh-huh, well like for sure you, know, you just said the word businessman like being a businessman that's a skill yeah it's being very a creative hard to do, yeah. that's a skill yeah like getting into these other areas like as you guys even start this podcast i'm sure you started learning things here and you're recognizing you're learning different audio skills that you didn't have before yeah, yeah and yeah. you recognize oh wow there's probably some dude out there that can just do all this crazy Cause like, stuff. I, I don't know. In an industry as big as something like skateboarding, I'd, like you think of the barracks, which is that huge oh, skateboard. I love the barracks, mm. yes. They probably are in a position where if they were like, hey, we want to do a barracks podcast, they wouldn't just like wangle it themselves. They'd go, oh, that skater, that sick skater is also a producer. Let's bring him on board because he's a producer and he yeah, understands right. it. And like, that's his skill. Like he, That's his thing and therefore there's his opportunity. And it's the same sure. with like graphic design and right. all these other things. So I kind of got a question for you, Keelan. So you mm. have been working with Giles. I'm curious from your point of view, you know, like you are the younger dude, you know. How much does he like, beat you? A, what is it? There's like a 10 year difference between you guys? I Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm 29. 29. 10 years. Yeah, yeah, 10, years. Yeah, 10 year difference. Uh-huh. That's cool. So um, what's that experience been like for you? Would you find that, I don't know, your mindset's a little bit different than the other guys who don't maybe work as closely or like do you see things have you noticed that you're starting to see things that they aren't seeing like kind of what's going on in that world yeah like, how's your no working? you're you're hitting the right the right <laughs> uh, like i'd say since doing more work with giles and sort of the behind the scenes sort of stuff i have seen maybe in certain circumstances uh, like an event we're going to or just how the other boys think sometimes is unfortunately can be a bit more selfish on their behalf do you know what I mean? Because I think how Giles started the company was very... He treated us too well. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You, you, you kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to you say set the a, bar too high. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. set the bar too high. So, like, now the business is getting big and uh, there's all these things we've got to try and manage. Uh, the boys are still thinking in the way that we started it and they, I think they want more when really they need to think Motus is theirs. You know what I mean? Like, right, now, now I think... Yeah, so now I think Motus is mine too as well as is your company but yeah, like yeah. I feel like it's mine so right. I to come out here to Woodward I have like the the, the duty the duty, to, like, <laughs> the, duty. To, the duty the duty to like to make a video and to film loads and to get clips and to get the boys out and training like we've had a couple of sessions where not sessions but we would just be chilling in the barn and we're not really doing anything and I'd be sitting there like why are we not training I'm sure we're all together and we love Parkle so much we're in this place like, we're just chilling between doing things. Like, we can actually just go out and have fun. Like, we can go and train. Yeah. But, I think uh, with it, you... It's you're... so hard because I love the guys so much. Like, they are yeah. they are my best friends. So, I don't want to be... I don't want to turn into 
the friend that's just like, come on, we need to be doing this. Yeah, Why are yeah, you not yeah. doing enough of this? But they also are like, they're doing their own bits for sure. Yeah. And they, and we're all in that transition stage where I'm, I'm 19 and I'm trying to get money. Like I, I've got a car to pay for. Uh, all the boys do as well. Like that, we're all trying to find money here and there as well as trying to keep motors going. Um, so I think everyone's just thinking a bit differently at the moment. Um, but yeah, at the moment I'm pro- I'm stuck with Motus. Like I'm st- my head's stuck on that because uh, we have ov- obviously me, Max, and Luca in Broome as well. Right. You know that, yeah. Um, so it's just hard to put all your focus into one thing. Uh, right. Yeah, but no. I mean, sure. yeah, you definitely like you come across as a bit more mature. Um, yeah, yeah it's like I can turn it on and off. So. Right, that's, that's, that's the funniest yeah, thing. Like, yeah. I was gonna say that because like, you know, if you watch any of the videos, it seems oh, like, like if you listen ball. to the if you listen to the Max the Max podcast when he was the guest. Uh, it's oh. Max. It's a very is, different Max podcast. Max influences me in the worst and the best of ways. <laughs> like, I know I, I'm quite I'm quite happy that I can I can I think be it's, really it's the stupid, best. but also I just know right. who, when I'm around certain people like. No you have access to, to this, yeah, like, yeah. this part of yourself as well, yeah, which yeah. is very. Like at the end of the day, you're nice. 19. It's like the worst thing for a 19 year old is if somebody was like, get in an office and wear a suit and like, you're not having fun anymore. Like, child- <laughs> right. childhood's over. Yeah. yeah. That's the worst thing for any of us, yeah. to be yeah. honest. Like, I like, yeah, I like, sure. I watch people. I know adults. I've been blessed to meet interesting, amazing people. And I make meet people that make great money mm. freaking miserable. Like, yeah, and it's yeah, not yeah, just a cliche. Yeah. I'm not just saying it because I heard it. Like, I genuinely know these people. Mm. Like, making, they're pulling 300K a year and yeah. they absolutely hate their lives, but they've already purchased so many things and built so much around this foundation piece of a job that they have that they're afraid to move and shake anything because if they walk away from that everything else crumbles and they're so so, attached to the things that they have that they feel are supposed to make them happy and that's a whole nother thing like I could get into but I'm going to leave that one alone because that (laughs) it is mad I I open that yeah like I'm I'm loving life and I'm not got much money at all. I, my Xbox is listed on eBay right now oh my because gosh. I because like I I need money for like food and what. Food not takes so much money. I mean, honestly, like money. I'm happy. Like I'm gonna say the word money one more time because our <laughs> community needs to keep hearing that word money. Like money, 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 yeah. <laughs> money, make money, have money. Money's not evil. It's cool. Like yeah, trust no, me, like, it's good. Just just use it in the right way. Right. Like yeah, money yeah. doesn't make you and turn you into a douchebag. It doesn't make you no. evil. It just amplifies the person you already were. Yeah. So if you get a lot of money and you start acting like a douche. You were a douchebag before you got the money. Yeah. Like, that's just <laughs> what it is. Like, you can change, but that's who you were to begin with. Yeah. So, um, you know, I do think that the community needs to change its relationship with money. We need to support brands um, to see our community grow, to get to the point we need to demand more of our brands. We need to pay for events and stop trying to sneak in for free. Yep. You know, that's things that I went into in earlier episodes. I want to ask you guys something very specific. This might go to you, Giles. And I know you've been here for a while, so thank you for having patience with this <laughs> podcast and this conversation. It's been a fun one. Oh, man. Um, I'm interested to know, basically, in an ideal world or ideal situation, like what is the plan for Modus? How far ahead do you guys think about this like what is I don't want to say the end goal because I'm sure it will change but you know yeah. what is the end goal as of today you know like obviously in the future it can change your desires and goals can change but as of like right now what's what's the end goal uh, <laughs> 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 oh, no. uh, um, he caught me <laughs> I mean personal and like personal goals but what i would want to do off the back of the company i like is essentially i want help <clears throat> oh that I about to say the word health and then i choked health and happiness and financial stability like personally i'm not looking for crazy net worth anything like great if that comes i like i i just i just want to kind of I'm in this weird position where I'm like I'm almost thirty and there's a lot of daunting shit in the future, I feel and you, and I just kind of I now really realize like what I at the bet like want as a base like a base sort of level is just like I want family I want health and I want just enough money that I can just not have to worry and that isn't a huge amount of money like it's mm-hmm. yeah with regards to the brand. I want it to be the most world dominating, financially crushing thing in the world that makes yes. so no, no. <laughs> oh, no. You keep going with that. That's no, what I want I mean, to hear. In some ways, I 
would love the brand to grow and I, I I have no reason why I wouldn't aspire to have the brand to grow to the size of one of these huge skate brands that does make millions and millions and millions like I don't as long as the sport of parkour grows there is no reason as to why the brand couldn't I wanted to keep it at the forefront of the community I want to do as much good shit in the community like people are always like oh you're so cool you do so many community oriented things and I'm like fuck I don't do anything I just say I want to do this like give me a hundred grand and I'll change the fucking game like give me the opportunity to well essentially I need to get this brand to the stage where I can do the shit that I actually want to do right gyms is a big one 100% want to build gyms like obviously there's sort of shoes and stuff like this but for me like gyms is where you can create that that core community and you can have a kid off the street or anyone or like it it's that hub Right, and you, you travel across the US or Europe and you see these places and it's this community and you give these opportunities for someone to literally change their life. Like Jared and Hulu, where would he be right. without an Apex gym? Like mm. where would that kid be? There's there's people like that and it's like, cool, well if I can sit down aged whatever and be like, look at what I have been the catalyst in. Like I haven't necessarily taken this kid and given him every opportunity, but I opened the door. So that's like the big one. Um and then yeah i mean it's it's just it's just growth and progression like it's i've said it before like parkour is obviously so everything's about progression and then, as you said if you're not growing you're you're dying like uh, more product ranges more clothing getting the clothing into other people's hands making parkour as cool as possible like i don't yeah. care really about much in this world apart from parkour which is really weird because I could be some crazy environmentalist or I could be into <laughs> politics or whatever and I have opinions of certain things but like at the end of the day it just comes down to parkour it's parkour and my family nice that's it like mm. so I'm like fuck I may as well and I've been in it for 15 16 years now so I may as well just take this thing to the the level that I can um and then and yeah and and with the growth of the company what I want to do is is then have roles like I fucking wish I was in the position right now where with Keelan I could be like Keelan full time job or at least part time job right. salary boom yeah. done like and cool you've helped you've, you've come on board first part time employee on your salary and now the company's growing do you want to move up or should we bring someone else in like I want to be growing and we're now at this weird stage where like within a year that could happen or it could go the other way it's kind of not necessarily the other way, but like I feel like the brand is now at the stage. We need to step into like the next level. Yeah, with this new factory, we're doing bigger numbers. We're going to be reaching out to kind of retail opportunities and things, which obviously they're essentially we're going to be seeing more avenues of larger sums of money, which can change this stuff. But we're not quite there yet, and mm. it's just savagely hard to get over that hump. Um, and yeah, that's 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 the kind of the next step, and then we can grow from there. I mean, the thing is, all of what you just said is kind of on your sorting that out. So that's what's that's the hard thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Retail, it's like none of us boys have anything to do with that. So that's where it's that's where it's hard. Like, yeah, there's a lot of uncharted territory to yeah. like dive into and kind uh -huh. of feel out. So, well, you know, that's like fire, and I like I wouldn't say necessarily that you guys don't have anything to do with it because like it's uncharted for Giles as well. So it's like yeah. you're yeah. all kind of stepping into the unknown. So it's like. You know, like, I made the mistake of, before getting to this position of director, thinking, like, I needed something more to before I could start reaching out to people. Like, I could have easily had messaged you. You might not have answered, but I still could have reached out, put the same sort of email out into the world. And you might have read it, and we could have had the same level of communication and yeah. response. But I waited for, like, this position of director to think it was going to make a difference. Mm. And then I... But I think sometimes you have to, don't you? Like Sometimes, right. You need that, like, kind of prior step, like that prereq. And it's weird, move. because technically you, as a person, are not probably any different to when you were sort of two three years ago right. or whatever but well no definitely different but like i know what you mean I know yeah it's it's the like director position didn't change it's me. that really weird thing where like there's a kid there could be a kid here who's like basic at parkour and and we're like oh you're right mate whatever and yeah. in four years time he might be a god and then right. suddenly he gets our attention and it's like well why why does he get more attention now mm. but i think it's just you can only give out so much attention like as a human like right and oh, yeah. it's that kind of you do have to earn it as weird as right you have to sound weird but I know exactly yeah. no, you, do, yeah. you do have to earn the uh, kind of people's ear yeah you know? yeah like, yeah 
I get that grabbing their focus and grabbing their attention. In the same way that a tiny brand that started yesterday, if they try to reach out to a, a retail store, they're then gonna they're going to get ignored. Not, right. Whereas it's like now we're getting to the level where like we've got the numbers and we've got the sort of followers and, and things that we can, it's it's leverage. Like right. I think there's a lot of leverage in life in different avenues. And like I'm super happy to hear you say that you are interested in kind of getting to a place where you are almost like brick and mortar with gyms and like physical location. Yeah. Because I think that's huge. Like, I never used to understand, like, why do these companies make these massive skyscrapers? But it's literally like a physical embodiment of the impact mm. they're trying to mm -hmm. make. Why do they have such a huge building for themselves? It's for these people to gather, for them to be able to employ so many people. Now it's real. Like, before you guys were following, like, your following is following, they're falling in love with you for an idea, a belief. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And now, like, you give them something physical to show them, like, yeah, we manifested this. It's a reality now. It's like, it's not just in your head and in your heart. It's also in front of your face. Yeah. It's in your world. So that's sick, man. And, you know, like, Keelan, I'm curious to hear as well, like, what is it that you kind of see coming from Motives for the Future? Like, because you are just as much a part of it. You know, right now you're, yeah, you're working yeah. side by side with the man you it's obviously in your heart. It's on your shirt right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah, like you care about this. So mm. I'm curious as to like how you, what it is you are wanting to see out of this brand and where I mean, you want to see it, it go. It definitely is exactly what Giles was saying. Just because I'm with him a lot of the time, it's kind of the same thing that I want to happen. But uh, I want it to make an impact on, like you were saying with Woodward, making it kind of bigger, more parkour parks and things. And I want Motors to have more involvement with that, like having clothes selling at Woodward you know it was big for me for me to hear that people had bought Breach like yes. skaters had bought Breach it'd be like oh, if, yeah 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 if, a skate, you're, you're if one really... single skater had bought like yeah, a motor's item I'd be like fuck that's so cool yeah because they're buying it because they like the look of it and it means we've done a good job on our end to like sort of showcase it to everyone not right. just like free runners you know yeah but uh, I, I do want it to be uh, a brand that can support athletes to just be athletes obviously it's so it, that's so hard to do now really really hard to do now but like for someone to just be paid to go out and basically wear the clothes and just train really really hard not wear the clothes and just like train and not really upload but but actually have an incentive to go out right. and do, yeah. do shit um, yeah I didn't really touch on that but that's definitely just yeah. the same thing it's just and I, and I want and I want to be able to create because I, I just really like making videos and I want that to be a thing I can do more often because I have to find another way to make money as well um, it's hard for me to focus full time into that that's the thing that kind of freaks me out is that like I don't want it to take too long and then Keelan gets trapped in a dead end job I hear yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't do that because I've seen people get trapped in dead end jobs yeah. like over the years people just fade away and suddenly mm. they're just working full time and then a kid comes along and then and then that life is just yeah. sort of that, that aspect of the life is very very hard to get out of um, not that you should be getting out of having kids. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, and that's that's the real sort of the worry is I just want to make it sustainable and, mm. and grow from there. But either way, because I'm having a lot of fun, it's like it's kind of hard to put me in a dead end job. Like, like yeah, you said yeah, when, yeah. You, when you were saying like, oh, I kind of want to get a job alongside while I'm doing motors just to get like a bit more money. Yeah. But I'll then if it. an event it's came around the corner, yeah, 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 you, yeah. You were saying well, I literally said I was like, I was like, well, I could like I could get a job in a pub in my town just a couple of hours, like a week or whatever, no. just to literally have a bit of spending money. But oh, then, sorry. yeah, but. <laughs> If they if they were like oh you need to work next Tuesday and I'd be like no it's for the love of movement then they'd be like no no it's, it's your shit you, I just I'd walk out the door I'd be like no sorry I'm going to for the love of movement <laughs> like no yeah. uh, comes first yeah yeah and it always it will is. now like that's the really yeah. tough thing you know and that's big like that's actually like a big part of you guys coming out here this summer like why I pushed so hard because for those of you that don't know Woodward is now trying to step away from inviting out so many international athletes yeah. just because it it's so costly you know? yeah. Yeah. really like buying the flights and all this it's like it's a lot so and there's so much of an American scene booming now yeah. that they want us to start reaching out to there but I like I was so adamant about Modus coming and a big part is like what you guys are doing it's not just the athleticism it's not just the movement it's the mission and like intention mm. behind it all the fact that you want to grow a platform for the athletes because that's where I find myself currently at one day like I woke up I coached for the last seven years and I was like crap am I really leading all these kids like they're all following me they're following what I'm saying they're following what I'm doing currently like like you just I'm like at a point in my life where like 
I just turned 26 like a couple weeks ago. My insurance in the U.S. just disappeared. So really? now, like, health insurance, bye bye. Like that's uh, it's, a, this, this country terrifies me. Yeah, that's me a for scary that point. thought. Like, yeah. You know, like I'm at the place where like I can't afford to buy a home. You know, like I like there's certain things that like I can't afford the life. I want to live yeah. and I'm watching the kids follow up behind me. I'm like, oh crap, if you keep doing what I'm doing, you're going to end up right there. So like, I, I need to show you guys a better way. I can't just lead you into the desert, tell you to follow me out there yeah, yeah. and not know where the <laughs> oasis is. So I either need to know where it's at or build it myself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where like, I see what you guys are doing. That's, I feel like that's big and I, I want to support that and I want that story to be told mm-hmm. and shared so people understand that it's being done for them. And Hopefully they recognize like if they help you, they're helping themselves. You know, like they're literally growing what it is they want from the community. Yeah. And to me, that's that's big. You know, like that is that's a mission, right? That's a part another side mission. Yeah. You know, like the, all the side missions come back to the big mission. Yeah. But um, I'm gonna have one more question, and we're gonna like you know you guys have been patient in here for you guys that don't know. <laughs> this it's is chill. Hot in here, it's this is only an hour and a half. We've, we've oh man, I mean yeah. I could go forever. To be honest, just, not even that hot. Yeah. His, his what would attic? As well, it's not even my, attic. my oh, office. My, yeah, uh, the office that's in the very top of my house can be very hot. So, and we can't, and we open, can't windows. open windows because the car, the roads right next to it. Yeah, so it'd just be so noisy. So this is actually okay. Tell me, yeah. oh, yeah. well, I'm happy about that. Yeah. I, can, this is I could literally go forever. Like, yeah. like, questions, like when I start getting into conversation, the questions start flowing. However, in. however, there is a swimming pool. Just, oh yeah, I, I'm, just I'm, there. I'm looking at it, man. So the benefit so. of being VIP at Woodward is you get access to like. The Lodge, which is this massive building. Full of Nutri-Grain bars. Loads of Nutri-Grain, Nutri-Grain bars. bars. Good, good, <laughs> bre- good breakfast. Massive swimming pool. Not massive. Good good, good size. It is a good size. Hot tub. It's glorious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. But, All right. Um, what's your, what's you know, your like, question? Um, the building the platform. That's great. Um, the last question I have for you, boys, really. And you kind of tapped in on this when I asked about the future of Modus. But I also am curious. I mean, you did start at answering this question on your own, Giles. The question is, what mountain would you say you are currently climbing, like, personally? And, Giles, you really did start to answer this, but, like, we're always sort of climbing a Mount Everest of our own at any given point in time. Like, what's the struggle that you yourself are working on that maybe these guys don't see or maybe you are open about it and you share it with them? He's a very open person. So my my (laughs) current read... I say read is the untethered soul and it is the I can't fucking get on it what's it called you hear that people we read every day like, <laughs> well, it's, I, an, it's an audio book I only got it out audio here audio books are just as good as yeah. reading nowadays I can't I can't find out what the tagline is it's the journey is something um, my I think it's it's fairly evident from what I sometimes put on Instagram my biggest mountain whether it be a side quest mountain or it's it's almost like I'm climbing a mountain which is life which is motus and everything but what I'm climbing underneath is very, like, it's not like I'm climbing a nice, steep, s- solid path. It's like there's crumbling bits and bits that fall away. And also there's, like, a savage fear of heights or something along there. Oh, God. So, so my, my it's, it's mental health, anxiety, and depression are the things that are just fucking me up. And I spend serious amounts of time just being like, oh, cool, I can't get past this. And if I can't get past this, then the brand can't grow and, and stuff like that. And it gets heightened when I'm on trips which makes stuff like this harder um and also just it's i mean it's, it, there's obviously just a lot of underlying stress because of the business and life and blah 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 blah. and it's yeah that's that's my mountain for sure like that's that's kind of you make it pretty evident as well with, with us like, yeah i'm fairly like, open it, it's, like it and it's so much better that you're that open i could be i could be like and like for right. what reason like what's going on the balance is like you don't want to be too I, I don't want to be too open because also like I don't mm-hmm. want to vocalize every single worry that goes through my head because I can be out here and I can like eat something that I've previously eaten a hundred times and be like what if I and in my head is what if you're allergic to that <laughs> <laughs> you're in the you're in America they don't have health care here like you're in Pennsylvania you're miles away from everywhere like da, 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 da. and I sit there and I'm like Jesus Christ what if I was allergic to that fucking Nutrigrain bar and I'm like I've eaten Nutrigrain bars all my life like <laughs> and it's, it's that kind of thing um so I'm not going to vocalize that because like I'm not just going to that's that that's not healthy because I think vocalizing what I'm learning is that you you have this subconscious yes. but the subconscious is not you 
And this is crazy because I didn't real I didn't know this until recently. Oh, we're having a conversation tonight, man. You just got me hyped up. Your subconscious is not you. You are you, but your subconscious is this fucking voice in your head. And the problem is, is I will latch on to what my subconscious projects, but your subconscious will flip flop doing whatever the fuck it wants. It, my subconscious might tell me like mm. you're allergic to this you're gonna die you're gonna die da, da, da. and then I don't die and it goes yeah I told you I'm gonna fucking die like oh that's messed up to yeah. lie it, it, no, but it, that, I mean that sounds like um, no no man that sounds like uh, schizophrenia but it's <laughs> it, essentially the nah, voice the voice in your funny. head will always it'll always just go in a a direction but it'll always explore both sides of the, the right. story mm. but if you latch onto one of them then it accentuates that and what I'm learning is that you have to basically ignore that or know when to ignore that but it's fucking hard it's like impulse control right yeah there. it's fucking hard because mm. it's scary and that's where a lot of anxiety comes from depression I think is a slightly different thing because that I don't get that nearly as bad as a lot of people but I get these waves of like utter misery which just stop you dead in your tracks and you're just like yep. I just feel sad you're like there is no other like I Life just is just heavy I mm. just feel sad yeah and you're like where the fuck's this come from um but yeah, so so I try not to like vocalize it like crazy, but it definitely is there a lot. So mm. it's yeah, it's it's a, that's that's my mountain or something. No man, crazy. I appreciate you sharing that, man. That's like that's big. Those are conversations that need to be had, especially well, the f- coming from men. This is the yeah, you know, it's like, fucking crazy. I put it on Instagram the other week because I was just feeling pretty shit, and I've I would just always try. And we did a we did a whole episode about it, and we've had so many good responses, like. It's so insane that people don't talk about it because there right. are people killing themselves left, right, and center. Right. Um, and it's it's so fucking easy to talk. Like it's so easy to well, for, it, okay. It's not necessarily easy to to get it out, but to to actually the process of talking is right. very easy. Like, like, <laughs> it's like it's an action that can be taken immediately to help relieve. Yeah. The exactly. Pressure. Like you could literally. So on the fucking plane ride here, right? And I do not like flying. I've progressively <laughs> started to like flying less and less. And I was just feeling shit. Like, I don't... I just was not feeling in a good way. I literally went to the back of the plane and just chatted to the air stewardess. And I was like, I'm really not enjoying this. And we just had, like, a talk for, like, 15 minutes. And I didn't feel great. I felt quite embarrassed that me almost thought he was talking to an air stewardess about just being trapped on a plane. But well, she... Why are you talking to her about? I basically... I just went up and she, like... I was, like, waiting for the toilet, but I was probably looking a bit stressed. She was like, you're right. And I was like, yeah, I'm just a bit freaked out. Like, I just... I don't enjoy flying that much. And she was like, oh, why? And then we just started talking about like life and family and and loads of stuff and mad yeah i did but it was see like talking to her. it was so easy just front. to and i've never done that in my life but i've considered it but at the end of the day all i did was i opened my mouth and i just went like i'm not enjoying this and then right. it instantly took that took that wall down and so many people don't do that well, oh, dude because mm. you just tapped on something and like it's just a matter of acknowledging the feelings that are there yeah whether they're rational irrational feelings are feelings and once they're there they're there it doesn't matter why they're there like if Keelan mm-hmm. tells me he's sad because he lost in a video game I can't say like <laughs> oh that's a stupid reason to be sad like nah man like you are sad mm-hmm. that's a valid yeah thing yeah, yeah. Like, yeah that's actually going on it doesn't matter why you're sad you are you sad, are sad so it's like acknowledging sad, yeah. that and then being able to express that because when we can't express what we're actually feeling that's where all these problems start to occur because now we're there's internal war we're fighting ourselves yeah mm-hmm. that's just never a good thing like the system's broken or breaking from the inside and crumbling so I mean like that dude we can literally talk about that for hours like so I'm gonna like not even like start diving into that but like I do appreciate you sharing that and having Uh, there's this other thing that I've I mean I've I've said about on Instagram I think and I've spoke to a few people about there's there's a a whole vein of something I want to do within Motus that's entirely directed towards like mental health awareness that i feel pretty close to like pulling the trigger on and it's a whole extra it's another side quest <laughs> but i'm just kind of like i'm fed up with the way i keep feeling which is more i need to take actions to treat myself but also every time i get low or i get really bad i'm just like fuck i know there's so many other people like this and i feel like i could be doing more in the outside world to at least would just be doing more like that's and that's the thing and I'm like well I've already got this platform and I've got this brand and I'm like well why the fuck not um, so that's that's there's potential there that you might see something sort of in the I don't know coming months yeah that is rad man because like, no one's like no one's doing it and that's not like I'm like oh there's a niche like yeah. I don't want to capitalize on anything um, well you see as ple- like if people you could help it's value that well, you I, can the, give and like it's- the highest suicide age in probably the US as well but in the UK is like 
I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's basically exactly the same as parkour's demographic. It's young men who are like 15 to 30 or something, mm -hmm. which if you go on like, I don't know, your Instagram and you're like, oh, who's, what's my demographic? It's the same fucking thing. Like our target market as a sport is the same people who are beating themselves up, not feeling like they can talk about their mental issues and inevitably killing themselves. Mm. So it's like, well, why the fuck are we not at least trying to encourage conversation or more? Man, I mean, so. you just sparked something from me now. I got to share it, which is, <laughs> you know, like, unfortunately or not unfortunately but what it seems like this situation is and this is once again this is just my opinion there is no like scientific backing this is just what i feel i observe that we're living with an old school mindset of what it means to be a man and this old school mindset came from a time of i don't want to say war but it came from a time where men needed to be harder because yeah, you know, we were sending them to war. We had yeah, World yeah, War yeah. II, we had Vietnam, we had like, we were just mm -hmm. sending our men out there. So our men, they didn't need to be thinking and feeling. We needed, unfortunately, we needed killing machines. We yeah. needed men that could follow orders. So let's shut the emotions down. It's very logical, black and white. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is why you need to do it. So that is when those men came back from war and they had little sons at home to raise and those little sons were looking up to dad on how to be a man. This is what dad is teaching them because this is what dad was taught. Uh, so or now, even granddad, like it's when right. it's so close that like it used to be just man up, grow some balls, right. like fucking deal Put with some it. Dirt on it. Yeah. You're not you're not gonna be alive for much longer, kind of thing. Right. And three emotions you could feel. Like you're yeah. either about allowed to be like super happy, ecstatic, you can be super angry, or you can be neutral. Yeah. There are no other emotions in between. You can't be sad, you can't be caught crying, you can't tell someone like there's like there's so many emotions that weren't allowed to be acknowledged. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. a little boy is still feeling those emotions whether you acknowledge it or not you're still feeling it yeah, I read a statistic the other day that I think kids boys and girls they cry an equal amount right. up until the age of five and then it's around that time that studies have proven that that's when kind of the mentality of like boys don't cry that kind of thing starts to come into play and then mm -hmm. the, the rate of how much boys will cry in a situation just fucking rapidly drops but it doesn't necessarily the kid isn't still upset but they just they just lock it all in. Right, they're being yeah. taught how to respond to the emotion because it's an emotional response. Yeah, it's how you're responding. And it's to the it's emotion. weird because I think I a few years ago maybe even would have listened to this conversation and been like, oh, I don't want to live in a society where everyone's crying their eyes out and being pathetic. But it's not that. It's just the fact that when life gives you a fucking shitter, like it's in the in in the right scenario, you should feel like you can just open your mouth and explain what's going on. Right, because a crying response at the end of the day is is that's a build up of like negativity right build up pressure I've, I've cried a couple of times in the last couple of years under immense stress and, and sort of whatever like and uh, but, but yeah but if I wasn't allowed to talk and if I didn't talk it probably might be way more than that right I mean um, you guys saw that with the meeting something I said to the guys the other day like I could like like I said to you guys earlier today speak energy before I speak yeah, English, yeah, yeah, yeah and like with them like I started to feel from my staff tension was building and I said to them I was like guys like we need to you know like well, why are we having another meeting today like we've been in meetings all day I was like yeah that was with them this is us now yeah. and I feel like tension's building here and I'm trying to cap it off at right now it's at about a three or a four I'm not trying to wait for it to get to a 10 and we're all at each other's throat and because we're saying things that we regret and yeah. things like that like while the tension's here, the four is already high enough. Like we need to start releasing some of the pressure and getting back down to a one or a two, because when mm -hmm. things are good, things are good. But if we just keep letting it bottle up and build up, eventually it's enough to break it. Like you could keep driving the car and getting the RPMs up, but eventually you get to the red line and you stay there. The yeah. engine blows, yeah. and that engine could have ran for a very long time, but you just kept it in the red line for way too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you could bounce off of the red line, but come back down. Yeah, you know. So it's like that, like. I mean, I would love in the future to dive into mental health and like have a whole conversation about that because that's something I'm super passionate about. I didn't really believe in like depression and anxiety up until a certain point where I finally experienced uh, like I had a, just a crazy long experience. I'll tell you guys about this one off the mic. Because, like, <laughs> this one is one I don't know if it's appropriate to be put out publicly yet. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you guys about that a little later. I was the same. I didn't believe it. I didn't really know about anxiety until kind of I started I, getting it, I guess. I think right. Many people do. Because depression, I, I, just, I didn't get it. Like, I didn't yeah. understand how you could just be sad. I, I, was, I had a mate at school, one of my best mates got severe, like, way, way worse depression than I have ever experienced. I'm sure of it because, I mean, it crippled his life. 
I just get these bouts where maybe I'll be down for like a week and I just and sometimes I get really really dark and I think about really bad things but it's never like the final I, ne- yeah. I never feel like I'm staying there I just kind of have these things where I right, feel like that like a, a, the, yes. yeah like a dip um, but like, I I didn't get it I was just I remember this mate and I was just like why like why why can't you just be happy like why can't you just not mm. be sad like why are you sad like why are you sad over this particular thing or whatever and then one day I just suddenly like was in that hole. You felt it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh shit, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like there's no reason to be sad, but I'm sad. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is fine, but on the inside, I just, just yeah. everything is just heavy and just hard. And like life is just literally a drag. And your like, mentality like, to do anything, yeah. Right, like there's like, I'm doing it, but I just, I just kind of just want everything to stop. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I just don't want to be right now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like that's like a thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was all part of the question of what mountain we're climbing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, so what, what mountain are you climbing, Keelan? Yeah, oh. yeah, I know, man. That's mad. It's a little trip right here. I definitely think, oh, quite obviously with me, a big mountain is trying to fix my ankles. Yeah. Because uh, that's been, like that, recently, the past few years, that's, I've been experiencing a fair amount of mental issues, but it's all to do with just like not being able to train, I think. I just haven't been able to like exercise the way I want to and like exercising obviously is the way to kind of like relieve yourself from like feeling stressed and whatever but if I can't do that the way I want to it's just not it's just not happening um and for the I mean everyone kind of knows but I've like fully I have a full thickness tear on my I think it's called the AF ATFL I think um which means it's not coming back like that's fully gone and I need to strengthen my ankles but I keep like I either start training a bit too hard and then bringing myself back down and getting stuck in like these stages where I just can't train at all or it, it's I mean my Instagram this this is quite not the best way to think but I was getting a lot of parkour jobs um, and that's how I was living and then as soon as I like got this big injury uh, I couldn't really post the same things I used to be able to post um, I didn't really get as many jobs anymore and that's when I started like kind of panicking and I was like oh shit like I'm gonna have to get a real job I can't I can't like I don't know if I can make it as an athlete, which is why, bringing it back, why I kind of put in more effort to motors because I needed something. And also why, if you're outside of this circumstance, you should have that secondary and third Exactly, hustle, like, exactly. Right. And I, I mean, I've always been passionate about making videos and things, but just taking that to a different level would be, it is what I want. But uh, I know as well as that, like family issues, uh, I, my brother, my brother's got like, uh, do you know what SPD is? It's like sensory processing disorder. Oh, no. Uh, and, like, it it basically means he's, like, su- super sensitive to basically everything, like, emotions, getting hurt, like, uh, he's slightly on, like, the autistic spectrum and things. But he, like, seems super normal and he's, like, one of my best friends. But, uh, which means it's hard for him to make friends as well. Uh, and when I'm away traveling and doing things and doing a lot of work and grinding by myself, I can't spend time with him. So always in the back of my mind, I'm like, shit, like, he has no one to hang around with. Like, I want to be kicking it with him. I, I want to basically just make sure, because he's my younger brother as well, that he's living a good life. So I've got all these kind of, like, worries, but, like, it's just growing to this big mountain that I'm trying to, like, trying to figure out what to do about this and what to do about this at the same time. And it's it's hard, but it's kind of working out more and more uh, when I open my mouth, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, I yeah. vocalised to my brother, and I'm like, look, I'm... That, well the thing is I'm in the USA right now we had a, like a scheduled kind of like family holiday right. and he was really looking forward to it and uh, and I had to break to him and be like look I've been invited to America like you're going to be there by yourself like obviously with my parents um, and like I held that for too long like I didn't tell him but if I just open my mouth sooner and actually tell him and like tell him how I feel and I've got to be doing this because I love parkour and I want to be chilling with you it makes things so much easier. Yeah, it's always, it's, if you just tell somebody straight away. Yeah. Right. Like if Never I, if I, as bad. Because it's always going to have to come out at some point. A- any, everything you yep, do, dude. it's going to have to come out. That's why I believe in like, speaking the truth yeah. all the time. Like, yeah, we could lie, but like, if, if the got, truth is eventually going to come out, why not just sure. get yeah, it yeah, over yeah, with yeah. and like, move on to the next stage? Yeah, and that if you've got, sooner. same is with you, if you've got like, a problem with someone, in, like in motors, if we have a problem with someone and someone's doing something wrong, if we just leave that, it... It escalates, obviously. Right. Um, so that it can hurt feelings opening your mouth, but it's better off doing that as soon as possible, and then you can work out how to fix it. Right. right. Yeah. It's yeah. a long run. Yeah. Mm. 
but you know we're all still figuring life out so Dude, that's <laughs> till the day we die. Yeah, that is, <laughs> no, that's a fire, a fire mountain to be climbing, man. Yeah. I appreciate hearing that. You know, definitely have your priorities straight. Mm. You know, taking care of yourself, your health, your future finances, and mm. your family. That is rad. And like, I appreciate hearing you say, like, "Hey, like, let's just get things out in the open." Mm. You know, because eventually it will come out. And, For sure. You know, obviously it's not just blurt out and be brutally honest. Yeah, you know, yeah. Have a little bit of tact with For it. Sure. For sure. And just like know how to say things and. Maybe the timing could wait five minutes or so. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, in the long run, like, if it's meant to be said, it should be said right away. <laughs> yeah. And you it's know, the like, same with a lot of things. Like, even I don't know. Recently, I've had to do a fair few like phone calls, like business phone calls with people that I don't necessarily know, and you phone them up and things. And it's like you shit yourself on the phone. Like you're like, oh, some people are just fine with it. Other people don't pick up the phone at all. I'm kind of in the middle where I'm totally happy speaking to people on the phone. But if it's m- maybe me initially sort of starting the process or pitching something or I don't know like it's you build it up in your head so much and then you actually get on the phone and then it's just the most chill thing in the world yes Mm. and it's yeah it's very similar I mean that's big you know like that's why like like a little side note like I take cold showers at night and like it's not for I mean there are like things I've read about like the health benefits and things like that but I use it more so as a like time to train my mind um to this idea of like in the beginning, it was hard because, like, the transition of getting into the cold and having the cold water hit your body, that was, like, the worst part of it all. Yeah. And then actually being in the cold was not an issue. So now, like, I practice, like, even, like, entering into cold pools and cold bodies of water. I just, like, I know the transition is the scarier, harsher thing. So if but I could not like get over with that yeah. better, that's then, so like, sick. that is, like, I know exactly mentally, like, that's the idea of breaking the jump. And yeah. that's the mentality that you build and that carries over into those phone calls and into those hard conversations and mm. that's asking the girl out and though it's like it's all of those things and you realize like oh shoot like it doesn't just have to be my parkour it doesn't just have yeah. to be breaking the jump kind of like how we were talking about progression yeah. and you know it always comes full circle which i love which is super rad and mm-hmm. a lot of people don't necessarily they don't see that circle they don't see the cycle and they don't recognize their place or point in it and that helps that makes them feel lost I find, and you know, like when we kind of have conversations like this, people could kind of start to get a little bit more perspective. Hopefully, the the consciousness, the brain, the awareness starts to bubble bigger, and it could see more. It kind of gets a bit of a bird's eye view yeah. on its own situation and recognize its its place in all of it, and that kind of helps give a little sense of ease and allows people to function a little bit more efficiently, get to where they're trying to go and you know be a little bit more intentional about what they're building and hopefully with that power and feeling of control they build bigger and better like Mm. that's kind of like something i hope to see from everybody just because like you know when you do bigger and better and people do what they're passionate about it's more cool shit to do in the world yeah like like woodward is the epitome of that you Mm -hmm. guys like you guys are live literally the epitome of it as well you know like i get to hang out with you guys because you know you all took the leap of faith and kind of have been doing bigger and better and just kept on growing and now we're hanging out here at like the coolest place in the world yeah, just like yeah, taking yeah. it and having so a fun cool. conversation you know yeah. honestly was so hyped before I came here yeah dude, it's been I'm, two years I watched because last year obviously everyone came and I didn't come because I was on a holiday and uh, oh, I just this I is felt the like I was holiday. missing out <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this year I was like dude. I actually can come back I was so hyped that we got invited because yeah, I know like, yeah. we might well probably won't have the chance next year because of the international thing and like I oh, don't no, we're making sure you guys motorsport well, always as long as I'm here well, I mean, we're, we're saying we're, saying we're just if, we, if, we, we're, if we're not we're just gonna try and get ourselves stateside anyway but yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, I, yeah. if I could do anything about it you guys will be yeah. here but it is just oh. and, I, and I just wanna help out here as much as possible anyway like yeah. you know what I mean it is anyone who has been here that no one's gonna say it's a shit place right yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. definitely like this place is fueled by passion yeah without a doubt and it's just positivity everywhere that. like yeah just like we live in a snow globe here at Woodward and mm-hmm. it just attracts we're all the same people just wearing different body suits yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. insane like that's why the BMXers could get along with us so yeah. well the skaters and the gymnasts are a little different but you know they're cool too <laughs> <laughs> I like them yeah, yeah. Like, but we all are really the same people and we're here for good reasons mm. so I mean like guys like seriously thank you for giving the time no worries the wisdom thank you as the, well yeah yeah, yeah this has been good like, very I, good one. yeah like appreciate this big time and you know like I hope anybody who's been listening um, you know I hope you guys gained a lot of value you know if you're listening on my platform I obviously don't charge anything all I ask is if you got 
any value at any point in time, share this with somebody because odds are like if you're friends with them, they're like you, they might be going through the same struggles or they might get the same thing out of it or something even more from this. So share it with them. Mm -hmm. That's how you show appreciation for this. That's how you help this whole movement grow. That's how you can pay it back to us if you feel that strongly. Like that's how you show the love. You share it and you give it like a genuine, honest share of like, yo, listen to this. Like it's going to help you. Not just that quick repost. Like really let the world know why you're reposting it and just put it out there for mm -hmm. each other. Um, for anyone interested, where can they find you two on social media? Uh, at the Motors Projects and then Giles Motors. Just Keelan.Ryan. Yeah, on, on Instagram. Fairly yeah. easy to find once you get onto one of them, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And we're yeah, we're, we're, we're the same. We don't charge, but we are sponsored by Nutrigrain, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a good sponsor. I'd love him. No, oh, that's fire. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, just a share, a like, a comment, and, whatever. And how can people find you? Yeah, For people yeah. dialing in on our You podcast. guys can find me at uh, witnessthis.pk. There, from there, like same thing as you guys, you'll be able to bounce around and find Fun all the guys else. on the team yeah. and yeah. see everything going on from mm -hmm. there. Or just yell, come to Camp Woodward and yeah, yeah, come yeah, to New York. Boy. Come to New York and hit me up. Yeah, like you guys, I'm always down to host and have some interesting conversations like this. Yeah, sick for sure. Ooh. Thank you very much. Let's go in the pool. Yeah, cool boy. See you guys later. Bye.